It is day nine of Assetto Completatetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetet
<laughs> Maybe if we go to the right... Oh, I don't know if we need to get to the right of those two other cars. Similar to ta 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 Why can't I see Twitch chat on my screen? Is uh, someone from Twitch say hello? Oh, there they are. Hello, fast boy. <laughs> you see, you woke up. Oh, no. Ah, oh, sorry that you're not well. You don't want to do that. Hello, Reduxer. You know what? Maybe... Maybe the meta to this car is just staying in much higher gears than you'd generally expect as well. Given that we can start in second gear. Hang on. First of all, what about my setup? We forgot about that. Stiff. Let's try that and then here we go. Got a plan here, guys. Make you smile, nice. Glad we could do something positive. I guess when you're throwing up, you can be like, well, at least I'm not getting my muscle doing this. is the AI is on such another level <laughs> P1 is gone Yeah, but then it lock. I've, I've reduced it, but it locks super, super easy. So, and then if you lock fractionally, you're done. This car actually does have a lot of torque relative to its rear, so you can, um, you can stay in higher gears because you can't put the power down anyway no it's not it's not like that fast boy you don't know what you're talking about <laughs> you don't know what you're talking about <sighs> this car has no feel for it it's on 100% here anyway the AI have mega brake skills <laughs> they're, they're like the AI are like all Max Verstappen.
If you if you fractionally lock up, there's one down. If you fractionally lock up at the start of the break zone, you're not making the corner. At least the grip comes back quickly on like I racing, but. Yeah, they're so close to the limit. <laughs> with no, with them, you know, their AI. They're so close to the limit. They're just like, I can't physically match their braking. Hello, Star Fox. Welcome to hell. We're still the same challenge. I might be able to use the uh, use the, the House of Bell software to add in a brake hack, like I racing. Time for eight out, yeah, back seat gaming. Uh, what, what you need to do? <laughs> well, if we did racing with subs with this car. I wonder how good we'd be. <laughs> right, Pete one's gone. Pete, he's gone. He's bloody well gone. <laughs> like this P two's hard enough to keep up with. Yeah, well, I'm not doing mid 44s, am I? So.
Maybe there is too much of a penalty for using the sequentials. Maybe, maybe I have to use a manual gearbox. But I don't know. You can very aggressively engine brake in this car, so you could short shift. Can try that. Can, let's see. Let's see if I've been gearboxed, gearboxed by Kunos. Bloody hell! Need strong tea for this, guys. How's everyone doing in chat? The Twitch crew are, let, are slow to wake up. Here we go. I have to change my brake sensitivity and everything for this now. All good, nice. How many places can I jump at the start? No, like because my it's my it's not really my elbow. It's my left hand just needs resting. To to be honest, both hands need resting. Problem is if you've just got one hand on a wheel. At the moment, I've been using this hand more to drive with rather than this one. So I'm not using the muscles as much. But. I don't think it is this I don't think the H shifter is causing this issue. It does shift faster with it. We can take advantage of engine braking a bit more. I don't, you know, you do, you do lose a bit of time, but the time I'm losing is all in the braking, really. So it doesn't make, make a difference. Oh,
Yeah, we, we weren't losing time because of shifting. <clears throat> we weren't losing time because of shifting. You can tell by the speed of the other cars. You can upshift faster, but it's not, and you can downshift faster, but the engine has so much torque on this car anyway, it doesn't really matter. It's been going on for a few millennia. Oh my goodness. Hello, Levu, 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 Levu. Hello. get 100% you have to win everything on the alien setting is to try and complete the game without having a mental breakdown is the real challenge I did, this car just locks up so easy and it doesn't have it doesn't rotate on lock up like you lord the brake bias is really quite far forward as well i like cars where the rear comes out as soon as you start locking up hello jar q If you slide, if you do that type of slide there, that's it. Too slow. Everything is too slow. 
<laughs> We're gonna punt the P1 guy, that's what we need to do. Oh my god! <laughs> the, 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 the AI move around so randomly as well. Well, we need to work out how to do that. <laughs> how to do that without spinning so much. That's the real skill. I don't mind the new Super Formula like every car in I racing drives exactly the same so it doesn't really matter I, I racing is drive under the limit in every single vehicle basically so it doesn't really matter that they've just got different speeds <laughs> like every every vehicle in I racing is fundamentally Memorized, like absolutely, like there's no, there's no balancing in eye racing, so it doesn't really matter. I mean, in a sense, I prefer the Super Formula Light because it's more grippy, so it's more direct, which makes memorizing stuff quicker. <laughs> but there's no like, yeah. Where is in AMS One AC race room? you are like doing a lot more sort of balancing and like risking like the way that you slip angle into corners and things it's just it's just something that's not in i racing at all ACC is the same as well I find like you can obviously slide the cars you can obviously underdrive and overdrive but uh, they're basically the basic what I would describe as guitar hero sims mind you this single player has turned into guitar hero <laughs> It'd be quite interesting to make a video fully defining what what we what we mean by guitar hero sim racing. Like I'd, like so the difference would be if you can if you can go over the limit and still maintain control of the car or like push effectively do something that's unproductive in most scenarios 
but you're not it doesn't it's not going to result in a, a totally erratic spin or the tires turning off for x amount of time i think that's what it's about it's like if in a simulator so in real cars you have the grippy state of it which is all sims do that pretty well i think actually i racing does that one of the best then you have like the actual sort of slip curve of the tire where the tire goes from being like uh in its sort of not much slip to the uh, what would actually be the fastest for driving a car which is quite a bit like that i think the whole car or tire i don't know how you define it but, but it would be in like five to eight degrees of slip or something and then you have like once you start going over that now the problem is if a simulator when you start going over that slip if the cars then completely like lose control entirely over that over that it what it means is at no sit there's no the, the driver can't risk going over into that physics state because it's never it's never useful so the difference with real cars and ac ams1 many things in r factor 2 race room you might they might not be perfect have problems but the, the point is you can actually go over the limit and you still have control of the vehicle like you might you're probably going to run out of track um you probably generally it will be slower for the most part but there might be situations where you actually it's not slower because of how you can it might not be slower for the specific line that you're taking in that situation it might actually be faster to go over the limit quite drastically uh, like let's say you're side by side with another car let's say you're taking a really weird acute angle or let's say the tracks wet and uh, the, the tires give out or something almost entirely but not fully um, also it can be faster in a real car to be constantly going slightly over like you're, you're trying to stay under the limit but you're repeatedly going over the limit to a very small degree going over it and bring it back over and bring it back like very so you're going from that state of control to effectively like you, you basically don't have control but you're like you know it's coming back quickly so that allows you to then drive under the limit faster because you have you can keep going over it right that's what real tires are like that is what i racing and acc don't really have at all so you can overdrive in them you can get into a power slide and you can keep the car stable but um yeah what, what it results what it means is pretty much 99.999 percent of the time when you play i racing and acc you are um you are just keeping it under the limit all the time like there's no it's too risky to to go over like if you so it becomes very clear clear in i racing when you're braking in the you break into a straight like a normal corner normal braking if you lock up one tire fractionally in i racing you have to wait like a quarter of a second for that tire to then start working like a normal tire so that what that means is you cannot risk braking absolutely at the limit because a quarter of a second in the braking zone of a tire not working at all like a tire means that if you explore that margin and it goes wrong you've lost like half a second of lap time <laughs> it's insane or and in i racing if you're if you lock up during the trail braking phase of the corner and you're running a competitive setup where the car rotates well especially with formula cars um you'll probably be spinning everyone will drive into you so that's why it's so that's why for someone for, for me that's why i racing is so unbelievably frustrating to drive because the one of the biggest most entertaining parts of a driving simulator is that thing as a driver and this is real life driving as well that aspect of being a driver is you as you're driving you gamble on a trying to be as precise as possible but pushing your own limits and your balancing skill 
to go right I need to catch a car in front I'm really gonna I'm absolutely pushing myself and I need to risk being mega concentrated on absolutely balancing the car mentally um, and that also is mentally fatiguing as well if you're doing that so if you remove that uh, that that balancing component and the ability to actually go over the limit in a normal way you've removed like um what i think is one of the most compelling components of driving hello damn fry yeah i was making i was doing some music this morning <sighs> Right, we, maybe if we can do launch control at the start of the race. We have to just get in front of P1 at the start. Can't, you can't, you get pitted. <laughs> Try to do this as legit as possible. Ah, oh, that was a better start. There we go. If we, uh, that was way better. Wow, well, we can do this, guys. It's all about the launch. It's all about the launch. Oh, I hope, hope we just need to hold the clutch half down. <laughs> further ahead than this oh the dream well at least we can get ourselves into second I think we can get ourselves into first straight away This is the hardest gaming challenge I've one of the hardest gaming challenges I've ever done. In Half-Life 1, I did a save game. I know Half-Life 1's old, but for those of you that played it, I accidentally saved the game the first time I was playing it with one HP on that part of uh, you know when you're on the train and you um not the train, like you're on that little cart thing on rails, and then you come across soldiers of reinforced like a corridor with like nest they've got machine guns and everything i accidentally did a save and lost all my other save files so i had to pass what is one of the harder parts of the game without getting hit at all by the ai <laughs> i know oh yeah i had like no ammo as well oh, i was so dumb it took me hours right we can do this Yeah. No, we can't cheat. No, we need to be faster than this, I think. Oh. I don't know uh, how much clutch we need to put on. Hello, DJ Squibby. I remember if we just hold the... The thing is, I maybe need to turn the tire skid sound up. Let's do that, where's the... Is it surfaces? Oh, it's been second gear. Uh, no, you have to be on the left to be lined up for the corner to go to take a wider line into the corner. I 
don't know why I can't hear the need to skid sound. Oh, tires, here we go. slower but we we need to basically as soon as the tire starts getting we need to push the clutch We have to be... The drag racing position. What's the drag racing position? Got to put high heels on. Due, <laughs> due to not being packed well, you know. <laughs> New bomb muscle. <laughs> Thanks for kicking the like button, guys, on YouTube. Woo! Ah! No. How do we get this? Well, I need I need launch control. What if we try and use third and clutch? Can do anything if you waste enough of your life. Ah, oh, we didn't hit the, the other car. <laughs> I was hoping maybe you would uh, hit the, uh, the other. This car, I hate this car so much. It's gonna work. <laughs> it's gonna work. I don't care.
Tatis doesn't understeer if you drive it properly. Fastball, you're talking bollocks. This car's shit. It's, a, it's too heavy. Uh, the brake bias is so far forward, you have to go really deep into the corner. It's ultra sensitive to locking up. It's terrible. <laughs> it's like, um, it's like, it drives like a GT3 car. The worst GT3 car. It's a terrible vehicle. It's probably all right in real life, where you can feel G-forces to avoid the locking up easier. Can't wait for Stacey Evo. Uh... This car also costs more than a Radical SR3. So what's the point? Might as well just buy a bloody Radical. I'm too good at that, but the problem is, we're then too far behind. <laughs> oh, we got away with it. He survived it as well. <sighs> Hello, Chad Ed. Welcome to the uh, despair zone. I'm going to hold the clutch down at a set amount. Try that. Oh, the, the, it's dog shit, this car. Like, the, the fact that you can't change the brake bias, it would be fine. If you could move the brake bias back, it would be okay. The problem is, when it locks at all, it understeers. That's the issue. <laughs> Thanks for subscribing. Like, you want oversteer. Like, what is wrong with people that this, this stupid understeer myth in real cars and sim races it's like no like you have to be an idiot to prefer understeer like it's just slower it's crap why would you why would you ever want a vehicle to understeer if you can drive like there's no <laughs> it's so stupid it's like counter steering is not hard it's easy it, like counter steering is easier than riding a bike it's easier than skateboarding it's not it's easier than playing tennis why why is it that people are like oh, no, we can't have 
oversteer so dangerous you'll catch people by surprise like well yeah okay maybe in a shitty road car this front wheel drive but it's irrelevant then because if you oversteer you just put your foot in the accelerator so when it comes to race cars you have to be like such a shit driver to want like understeer as like the the most dominant performance of a vehicle Go on, get, go on, share the setup in game fast, boy. If your setup makes this instantly faster, I am. Uh, you're you're going to be pronounced king of the aero, boys. <laughs> now the default setup shit. I'm driving a bouncy castle. Get this setup up. This car, I think this car's a tank as well. I think that's the big problem. Like, it's such a... Like, it just feels like it's so unresponsive, horrible car to drive. Like, compared to, like, a Radical, which is the same price. Why would you want something that drives like a cross-channel ferry? Um... The, uh... We've got this bet this setup exchange. It's in uh, race race labs app. Let's try let's try this best KTM crossbow setup. Let's see what happens. <laughs> if we instantly win now, I'll I'm gonna cry. No, no, this might be way faster. Oh, come on. If it's bloody set up. It'll be Kunos tyre pressures. We'll see. P1 still just disappearing. It's all the bloody braking in this car. You have to drive this like eye racing. <laughs> My racers would love this car. Nah, it's still shit. It's, it's, it will be entirely in the braking. Oh, the, the the difference is is that if you do lock up, you don't go ploughing on forever. It just means that the car's annoying to drive. Hang on, maybe maybe it has that weird thing. So there's a weird thing in AC where it seems like if you brake gently with some cars, especially cars that don't have oversteer. Um. Yeah, if you brake gently initially with cars that aren't oversteery, they don't turn in and they lock up. Whereas if you brake super aggressively, um, they don't lock up. It's like, it's like the uh, it might be a suspension thing where the front's not unless you put a lot of load on the front, it doesn't then 
go in or if the car's an understeery car if the car's an oversteery car it's not a problem because the weight of the, i guess the back's rotating around so it starts turning anyway so maybe what we need to do is just smash the brake ridiculously um and really get the front loaded up no i think the mx5 actually rolls in a bit yeah like the, the but the lotus has yeah it's very understeery but that lotus also has abs <laughs> Is I normally, in when I play AC, I'm normally driving stuff where you can actually move the brake bias further back. So this thing, this behaviour doesn't, uh, isn't uh, something that you normally. As I say, if it's a car that you've got, if it's an oversteery car, the back's going to come out anyway, so it rotates into the corner and it's pretty quick, so it's fine. So I've had no issues with any oversteery car, but if it's an inherently understeery car, I think you might have to mash the brake a lot more, which is weird because. That's the behaviour in ACC's braking, that you have to like mash the brake really hard to so me, and and I think it's pretty. I I have a suspicion with a, AC one and ACC. I think the suspension, like whatever, however the suspension works in those sims, is um, yeah. However the suspension, I think Kunos. Maybe it's not suspension, but I have a suspicion that suspension is one of Kunis's weak weak spots, especially compared to like I race. Well, I don't. It's hard to say with I racing because the curbing and stuff's all flattened. So yeah, but you just have to work out how to drive the car. Let's let's try smashing the brake. <laughs> I like to be delicate. That's the one aspect of I racing that I actually like, is that you can be really delicate on the controls. Like, I, I just really like cars that are very, very oversteery. Oh, why are you braking there, you shit? <laughs> right, let's try this brake. Ah, uh, yeah, this might be it. I mean, it's not an incorrect way of braking, to be fair. Oh, you cockhead. Like, you do want to brake really hard in the initial phase of the brake zone because you've got the downforce, you've got the, the cars moving quickly, so the wheels aren't going to lock up. The, the, the AC understeery car better. Uh, what? Why does the Pluke and you need to learn how to drive, mate? AC's oversteer is like the most obvious oversteer of every single. I see it locked up on that one. So you have to be above a certain speed. The oversteer in AC is like the easiest to notice out of all the Sims. So I'm not sure. I'd, I'm not sure what you're on about. On, if you mean in some cars on throttle. The power band in AC is very aggressive, but in the braking, not at all. Has the least ever. What are you even saying? Like, I, I think you just have a singular way of driving. Well, you need to learn how to drive different sims differently and different. Different cars, different. I, I, I really don't know what you're saying. It doesn't make any sense at all. Like, in order for me to play iRacing, I have had to completely <laughs> relearn or to completely change how I drive. The same with the race room. AC and AMS1, I find, drive mostly the same apart from certain cars. Uh, R, R Factor 2 and LMU, you, the slip through the corner is different, but the braking and stuff is pretty standard. Yeah, well, the, the people that say that AC or... I've never understood the understeery argument in a sim. Like, like, 
ultimately, if you're going too fast into a corner, you will understeer whatever the physics engine. So, basically, if someone's saying X sim is understeery, what they really mean is the track grip is lower. That would be the only logical conclusion. Um, because you can in all the sims, you can move the brake bias back, you can increase the rear ARB, you can open the diff coast. So, I mean, I guess what the, the, the real thing that you notice that's very different in terms of the actual physics behavior is the point at when you get on the throttle in different sims. So, some in some sims and some simulated cars, the point at where you get on the throttle is different because it'll induce understeer if you get on the throttle too early. And so, in Project Cars 2 and Automobilista 2, you want to get on the throttle before the apex. In race room, you kind of have to wait just slightly after the apex, after having understeered into the corner on purpose. In iRacing, it's kind of like you, you sort of trail break through the corner and lift off it in like, it's kind of midpoint. Like you really want the car straightened up before you start getting on the throttle, but that's mostly due to the tyres. If you if you slip them or, you, you know, with a car where you can put down too much power, if you overheat the tyres, you're screwed. Um, AC, the, the point where you get on the throttle through a corner is the midpoint of the corner. AC's issue is the, uh, the when the throttle application, um, if you have a car that has too much uh, torque for the grip of the rear, so some of the vintage cars, some of the vehicles anyway, the, the point at where the car is going to spin from too much throttle is is like so narrow in in the throttle application like you have to be so absurdly precise with the throttle to get the balance between laying down the power and the wheel spinning up it's not with all the vehicles but that's just that is something you notice doing the hot lap stuff we were doing Thanks, fast boy. To be honest, I think doing this from the high speed corners being way more aggressive on the brake. Gonna give us a lot of pace. But yeah, and anybody that says AC is understeery, ga I guarantee you they have their force feedback set up incorrectly, like because they can't feel it. Because the nice thing with AC is, even if you had a understeery car, a car that's prone to understeering, you can feel how much you can go through the corner before it'll understeer. So you then don't understeer. And that's how it is in real cars as well. Like, um, obviously, they're, they're, you know, if the road has a slightly bit of different grip that's caught the driver out from what they've just done on the previous corners, they'll catch them out. But like, if the track is relatively consistent and the tires are in good condition, the driver has like a range of g-forces where they're like, oh, that's that amount, that amount of g-load, the car can take that that amount of lateral g, the car will stick to the road. And so you then have a framework for what you can play with before you're going to start drastically understeering. What uh, force feedback says? I'm just using like a Moza R12 with uh, nothing on it. Let's try this other setup. 
Make it, make it more understeery. What do you mean? Like, if people... So the the way that people don't notice... I am the champion of the ninja. Thomas with the tier three. E e e <laughs> e Thanks, Thomas. Really appreciate that. 32 months of wasting e money. Woo! Um, if you put... If you put loads of, like, interpolation filter on your wheel, or you have lots of damper, or you're running, like, really low force feedback, um, you're not going to be able to feel the more subtle component of the variation in load of the tyre. And you'll be surprised how many people set their force feedback up that like that because they drive road cars, and road cars have shit power steering, so they feel, like, super dampened, and there's not much coming through the wheel. What, what, you, what people... A lot of people that have not driven any race car, any responsive car, or anything nice. Maybe they've done a bit of go-karting. Jared Racing! Thank you. Let me let me add you. <laughs> you you're already on the sponsor board. Do you, do you want another do you want a message? Oh, you can have, what do you want to put on there? You can have anything on there like Game of Muscles a Moron. Uh anything. Choose, choose what you want. Um, yeah, a lot of people uh, feel like that the, the road car is, has really bad force feedback. It just has really strong self-aligning, right? And so that's what they think all force feedback should be like. Now, the, the reality is, in real race cars, some cars have really responsive, detailed force feedback through the steering. Even some cars with power steering. And some have absolutely no information of them at all. And then obviously in the simulator, you have no feel for anything. So why would you not set it up in a way where you can feel what's going on? But in their minds, there's a lot of people where in their minds, it's like, oh, sl sluggish, dampened force feedback is realistic. So, and this this is like really pervasive. The ECCI wheel had a huge like mass on it to smooth it out, but also add weight to it, which is like, why? It just makes it worse as an input device. It feels more realistic. Uh, the f uh, joysticks, uh, flight sim joysticks. The Hotas Warthog has like really bad stiction and like it's really like over the top, right? Because oh, it's stiff and hard to move. Realistic. It's like no, real planes are like sometimes they can be shit, but sometimes they can be like nice and responsive. And <laughs> it's but people just get stuck on like stupid ideas, and then you can't move them forwards on it. I'll put uh, so I, uh, the uh, donation is you, you know, whatever you want. That's what's going there. <laughs> oh, that's clearly what was conveyed to me. Whoops. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Um, the worst, right? The worst thing with modern cars is so my parents have a. Uh, a VW, what is it? A, a Volkswagen Golf or something? I don't know. And um, it's got the worst. Uh, it's quite nice when you're just driving along normally, but um, they, they live in Devon, right? So um, the roads in Devon are like all over the place. Like an American would have an aneurysm. Um, and the roads, so you're driving on a normal bit of road, and then the road can't, the left hand side of the road will just arbitrarily go in and do weird shit or whatever. Like for no reason, it's just the roads. Are, it's just because they're on like really old roads, right? And the force feedback in the Volkswagen Golf, the car will go, "Oh, you're driving off the road," and then the the wheel goes. It's like a two newton meter or so push. It'll go. Eh. <laughs> Unfortunately, it goes eh, into oncoming traffic. <laughs> like if you hold onto the wheel, it's not enough strength to. Um, it's not enough strength to like override you as a driver, but. It's mental. Like I, I was driving their car for the first time, and I was like, oh, oh, yeah, this is really nice. It's actually a really nice steering input, really smooth to drive, like way better than older cars. And then I'm just like going through a corner, and then the wheel just goes, Bap! and I'm just like, what the fuck's going on? Because my sim racer, like mine, is going, oh, we're oversteering. <laughs> yeah, you can turn it off, but it, like, it's my parents' car, so just whatever settings they leave on it. But it's funny because even my parents were like, uh, my mum was like, she thought it was mental as well so it's like well I, I i don't okay i guess if you're driving down a motorway and you're falling asleep it's useful but then you shouldn't be in a car anyway should you <laughs> so, it's so stupid 
Stop crying, get good. I wonder if that's the setup. <laughs> a pluke and I'm GT7 Project Cars race room and bracing. You feel what the rear's turning in? But in AC it feels like yeah, no, your your wheel is bollocksed. Um are you how are you playing the game? Through like content manager or something? You put like you've put shit settings on. Like I'm 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 like you you are categorically incorrect. Like you've you've messed something up because AC is like the most detailed Synthoforce feedback. Like you, you could you might not like certain stuff and way it feels and stuff, but it is categorically this isn't just me. Like I know lots of real world drivers that like rate talented people, and they're all like, "Yeah, yeah, no, this is really awesome. This is how this works." You know. So if if what you were saying was true, then they would, you know, why why would uh, it, it doesn't make sense? Also, GT Seven has completely bollocks force feedback. That is just clipping in GT Seven. So I I think what you're latching onto is over. I don't I don't like AC over the top like the self aligning. But that is amazing. Like c borderline probably clipping self aligning. The, probably one of the well, one of the or not the best simulation to practice like uh, I'm alright, Borden Clo, hello. G mods. They're really it's really good. Yeah, I I Palookan, I think what you're latching on to is the self aligning strength, just pushing left and right. Abdullah Salman yeah, no, that's a load of bollocks. So, like, but by, by like you say, AC's tire model is outdated. That doesn't mean anything. A model is either good or not. It doesn't matter how old it is. So, AMS one drives better than bloody uh, i racing and many other things. AMS one is using physics code from two thousands. Uh, I racing is fundamentally using physics like the, the, the underlying nature of it is from a 2003 physics engine they've updated it, they've done stuff to it it has got more complex they've, they've done things but yeah so it, it doesn't matter I, a, AC's from like 2014 Palooka yeah I don't know your, I don't know what's going on with you but like yeah, also unless you've played a sim with a like you do notice the difference between sims with even a G25, don't get me wrong. But by the time you use a direct drive wheel that's got at least 8, in, eight newton meters of force, you have so much information relative to like a T300 TSPC racer, whatever. I mean, like a CSL Elite probably gives you pretty much all the information you could need to drive from with most stuff. But yeah, like Paluka, you, you, need to, you need to play sims with a DD wheel if you can. <laughs> and then you'll change your views. <laughs> my muscle reminds me of my autistic brother. Well, probably I'm autistic. We're, play we're all playing Sims all day long. <laughs> Nothing wrong with being autistic. Hang on. Otto, Gamer Muscle is king. He has more hours than all of us combined behind the wheel, but wonder why we're all noobs. Beat him in every race. Es excuse me? Yeah, I'm not being beaten in every race. Most races, no. I'm look, right, right. I am like I'm live streaming, reading chat, and driving for ten hours a day. And still, when we do like I racing, we're finishing like the six, top six of the top split with cars. And that's in a sim I'm completely shit at. That I don't. I, I find funny and entertaining for, for to you know it's entertaining, but I just don't. It just is terrible. So. <laughs> You, you know, when you factor in ten hours of driving a day for for a week non-stop, you know, I, I I think I do pretty. I I I feel like I don't think I'm very good, but I think I do all right, all things considered. Uh, Palookan, you don't need a d no no, you don't need a DD wheel. But what I'm saying is, when you have a servo motor that's eight newton meters and can rotate at two hundred RPM. Okay, it, it's a good go. enough device that allows you to feel the actual dynamic range of the force feedback that's coming out of the software. So when you use a T300, a, I've, I've, I own all these wheels. I have a T300. I have a G25. Well, I sold it, but I had a. I've got a G293. Um, I had a TSPC race. I had a T500. I had a CSL Elite, and I used a Club Sport quite a while. Right. 
until you use basically a CSL Elite or better, or let's just say an 8 Newton meter DD wheel with 200 RPM rotation, until you use that, the physical mechanics of the wheelbase that you're using are drastically interfering with the actual force feedback signal that's put in that's been put out of the game now i'm not saying you i, I used to play with the g25 loads you can still feel a lot you can still drive really well with it t300 is even better than the g25 but the point is you are experiencing the wheel combined with the simulator in those scenarios whereas once you've got to 8 newton meter 200 rpm you, you really it's the you're, you're experiencing the actual force feedback of the game it's like if you listen to music through shitty tinny headphones you can understand the music you can hear the words you can get the beat and you can enjoy it but until you play a song with like nice big bass like speakers and everything you're not going to really fully know exactly all everything that was in that song or the actual nature of that music that's all right otto i, I figured you were joking but <laughs> yeah and i'm not saying people should get dd wheels i said I'm, I'm a big fan i did d25 for like five years uh you just got uh J, J rad racing yeah once i would say once you get to like okay okay i was being conservative like what well, i'd say once you get to like 12 newton meters basically because it, it, it depends what cars you're driving. Once you start getting to like formula cars, uh, cars that don't have much dynamic range in their force feedback with a various simulator, um, then you then having higher new to meter wheelbases means you can crank the force feedback up more before they start clipping, and then it makes it easier to feel the dynamic range. But you know, you know what I'm getting at. Right, let's try this. Better be an easy win, otherwise I'm uh, quitting sim racing. <laughs> it's all the break, but we'll just we'll just set up a break hack. It's fine. It's all in the breaking, guys. Ah, oh, get out of my way. <laughs> the other thing with having um the other thing of having oversteer when braking is it gives you a really good reference for uh, the limit because the car when you're braking the car starts rotating that that applies to self aligning force and so that lets you know where the limit is through the force feedback so in in sims that don't have like a um rotational ffb like a sort of seat of the pants force feedback you can use that load on the front from the back stepping out as a reference for how much you're braking also i, I turn all the uh the damper off if you if you're using a shader patch it has a load of like weird um, pointless force feedback stuff that I think works with some cars but not others Thanks for everyone that's tuned in on YouTube, by the way. Uh, we have 150 people suffering with us. Oh, this setup's faster! Oh, my God, I hate you. I hate you. I hate you, fast boy. This setup is way faster on the straight for some reason. Oh, this is bullshit! This is bullshit! I've just spent four hours and... <laughs> Ball aero, right? Fast boy is king of the aero, boys. Absolute horseshit. Absolute aer aero boy bollocks. This absolute shit. Why is the default setup and the other setup so bad? 
Oh my goodness. This is absolute horseshit, guys. This game is the worst game I have ever played. I I, <laughs> I, I just this is the worst thing ever. Absolutely, this is worse than Battletoads. Fast Boys, the Arrow Boy King. The King of the Arrow Boys. Oh my goodness, this is what a joke. What an absolute joke. Why is this like 10 times faster? <laughs> Thank you. Hang on. Public viewers, I hope you are all happy when this young man started this challenge. He was but a boy now. He has aged losing his hair and by the sound of him his sanity. I don't know about you guys, but I am very happy. Have a great day all. <laughs> <laughs> it, what do you want? It was that. Oh, look how much faster this is! Oh, I hate sim racing! I hate sim racing. I've spent four hours, five hours a day. I don't know. I've lost this. Oh, bloody hell. It's all set up. It's all, it's all set up. Oh, for Christ's sake. When I'm older... And I'm like, oh, I've just killed myself. It's all right, we'll catch back up with him. When I'm older and I'm dying, hopefully when I'm old, I'm going to die in some stupid accident, I know it. When I die, I'll be like, oh, I wish I had another two hours to, uh, I don't know, look at grass or something. And, uh, and then I'll remember this. I'll go back, I'll go, oh, yeah, no, I wasted my time on Earth. What did I waste it doing? Oh, yeah, I wasted it driving... A, KTM crossbow with a shit setup thanks to Kunos. I honestly Kunos should be sued for this. They've I should send them like a check in like well not a check, they should send me a check for wasting our time with this absolutely terrible bloody setup and it's <laughs> I, I mean I'm sorry, like I I think I rated developers are bad, but like a kudos are like they've they've they did ACC force feedback, which they've got to apologise for. Four years of ACC, that's just in, that they need to go to the gulag for that. And Unreal Engine, I mean, just think how much everyone think of all the VR players who are now can't see properly because everything's blurry due to them getting used to ACC and Unreal Engine. And all, think about the graphic. Think about the environmental damage Kunos have done using Unreal Engine. Like all those 4090s running at 10,000 watts, killing birds and everything, so that people could play ACC at 40 FPS. Think of that. That's Kunos's fault. And then look at this. Look at this KTM crossbow bollocks. Uh. I won't make any more references to 1940s Germany because it seems to upset some overly sensitive German streamers. And uh, so we won't do that because, well, you know, but uh, I, I would say, kudos, they're, they're like the Brexiteers <laughs> of sim racing. Oh, dear. Oh, bloody hell. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Absolutely typical. Right, we're going to get past him and then I'll be free of the KTM. Come on. Uh, Fast Boy is the king of the aero boys, just so we all know this. It is being decreed. So what on earth was wrong with the car, with the setup, the other setup we were driving, for it to be as bad as it was? Like did, did we just not have an engine in the car? I was wondering why I was having to... I was wondering why I was having to paddle with my feet. Was it a Flintstones car? Someone should incorporate a 4090 into an air fryer. That'd be good. Oh, we're, we're in the lead! Oh, we're free! Oh, this is like Braveheart. 
We're, we're going to do it. Christ, this crossbow. The drifting. The drifting in this crossbow as well. The sodding drift challenge in the cross. What is Kudos with this? Did, did Kudos just hate crossbow as a company? Like KTM. <laughs> Kudos were like, they were like, ah, oh, KTM. Someone at KTM said something bad to Marco. Or like Marco bought a crossbow and the car broke down and KTM didn't service it. So uh, so Marco made sure that Kunos put like made it the shittest car in the sim with the shittest challenges <laughs> just to get back at KTM. Fact. <laughs> that's what I would do if I was if I was the CEO of a sim company. That's why uh, I racing made the Porsches so shit because uh, Porsches are the best cars in the world, but. Uh, I don't know, maybe uh, someone at iRacing bought a Porsche and it broke down. They couldn't afford to replace the £10,000 switch or something. £15,000 wheel help, and so they were like, right, we're going to make all the Porsches complete shit in this sim. And uh, sim racers won't notice because they're too dumb. Right, here we go. It's over! I'm free! <laughs> I'm free! <laughs> yes! Ah... Oh only took a day first time with a setup I mean what a load of aero boy bollocks what a load of bollocks right let's have a look at the setup oh, I don't want to I'm just gonna quit so it saves it <laughs> back on to the completitativo it's on guys <sighs> let me just check this out we'll see what's different with it Thank you, guys. Thanks for that uh, generous donation, whoever that was. Uh, Ad Addy, Addy 1936. Let me add you to the list here. Really appreciate that. Thanks for using the high skill donation link as well. Uh... Yeah, I really appreciate the support. Addy, A D I, one, nine, three. You, you weren't born in nineteen thirty-six. The oldest sim racer alive. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I could only use a half newton meter wheel. I might go to two newton meters. Oh, my hands have come off. <laughs> the dangers of sim racing. Imagine if you could do setups yourself. No, because I wouldn't know what the BS setup bollocks was, would I? Oh, hang on. Let's first, so let's first look at the default. Right. Gears are the same. You can't change them. 26, 27. Feel doesn't matter. Uh, minus 3. Uh, uh, uh. It must be the the uh, the alignment that we're slowing the car down, because we stiffness does affect things. Ride height and alignment. Let's have a look here. So the camber. So was it the camber was probably slowing the car down. It shouldn't really slow it down that much. I don't know. Ah, uh, the tilt in the front down. Tilt in the front down and, uh, yeah, I, I, that that's another thing. That is actually a thing in real life, isn't it? If you... So what you want is the car to be as low as possible and as stiff as possible before, like, the car, like, bumps on the track uh, mess up the car from being able to stay low to the road. Like, so... You, the whole point of the, the... I could be totally wrong here, guys, because I'm shit at this. But, like, my understanding is you basically want the car to be as low and stiff as possible. But you compromise stiffness of the car so that the car doesn't bottom out from bumps and so that the car doesn't is like doesn't go mental from bumps. So that's where they compromise stiffness. Uh, but then these the, the tilt thing... So, like... From my understanding, in real life, I don't know, it's going to depend on the underside geometry and the rear diffuser and then like aerodynamics and the type of vehicle if you wanted to, like the rear to be higher. 
But presumably, if a car is tilted down, it's going to increase the pressure differential. If there's if there, if there's more area at the back of the car for air to occupy under in the rear diffuser or under the car, presumably that would produce more of a suction effect from the, the from our diffuser oper uh, works. But like. The problem with racing sims, this is why I don't bother going too much into setups, is because I, I, I know a few alien sim racers, and I've known them in different simulators, right? The, the people that played Race Room, R Factor 1, AC, uh, iRacing, and what have you, right? And um, the things that make you get that last like that, that give you the stupid performance are different in each simulator. So there's obviously it's completely arbitrary. It should, it, if the sims were re or realistic with setup, the things that made the car faster would be the same in every sim. So that's why I don't get heavily invested into setup outside of um, brake bias, differential settings, gearing, uh, like turbo settings, and then like basic downforce stuff in terms of oh, front, more front wing will make it more pointy, you know that kind of stuff. Like so. The only setup stuff I know is setup that's pertinent to my enjoyment of how the vehicle handles, not what's actually faster. Uh, yeah, yeah, Ultra Instinct, but that, that's like a da but the, the, so the, the thing is, if you were just doing stance in a car like this, wet, like making a car wedge, to then effectively that is creating more downforce from the car as if you could just make the, you could visualize the car as being a plane but then the thing would be um depending on the speed of the car and the nature of the car uh at certain angles are going to produce more drag so like yeah okay you, you might have more downforce but that downforce might still be negligible to what when considering the mass of the vehicle and the radiuses of the corners and everything else that extra that extra downforce might be completely negligible to the drag it produces. So, you know, it's this is the thing with setup, and, and a lot of it's like totally counterintuitive. <laughs> like, it, I think it's one of those things where you just have to, like, you have to have been in it for so long, or like, you you just fit. So the people I know that are really good with car setups in racing simulators. They are oh shit. We've got a Nordschleifer race. The people that I know that are really good are people that have just spent ages changing settings one by one. <laughs> They're just like, oh, 100%, 50%, 25%. Oh, okay. And then they just keep doing that over and over again. And they're already like alien pace. So they... Um, you know, they 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 come. They're always they're always driving at the maximum of whatever setup they're driving. Right, hang on, Canadian crispy. The camber is too hot. High camber equals poor braking. Why does high camber equal poor braking? Is it a smaller contact patch? Yeah, Kowalski, that's how it's supposed to be, but that's bollocks. <laughs> so that that's not the reality, and it's also probably not the reality in real life either. It is it is from like a pleasurable part of driving, and it would be potentially for longer driving, but in um, in reality, the best like once someone's a really good driver, they drive they can drive anything. So setup will always be. What is the the fastest setup that the driver can drive? And this is why Max Verstappen is like absolutely mental because he can basically drive insane, super mega snappy oversteery setups. Like basically sim racing. If you if you were back in the day with R, Fa R Factor One, like competitive stuff, if you watched that or like were around it a bit, the setups were mental. And also, with like i racing, the really, really fast setups for like Formula cars and stuff, they are crazy snappy oversteer, right? Which, which would they would never be run normally in real cars. Whereas you have someone like Max Verstappen, who I think can basically drive sim racing setups on real cars, and I think that's why he's like 
on another level compared to other drivers at the moment. A G hammer it is as long as you can control it. That's the thing. So it um, a, a lot of drivers. So I think another thing that that might have this might be changing now. And this is probably bollocks. This is my theory, <laughs> my bollocks theory. Most real world drivers that go into Formula One and like you know F three, F two, F one, what have you, they come from like go karting initially, right? And a, the go karts are not set. They're not set up in the same kind of um, that oversteery style of driving. Is not really how go karts are driven, um, so. But it's how sim cars are driven. So ba basically, if someone was like Hamilton and they're amazing, but all through their development and all through how they learn, would be like, but effectively go karts is where the, they predominantly learnt their driving craft. I don't. I just don't think that they develop the same as someone that gets learned their driving craft with go-karts plus also racing simulators and you know yeah you missed it <clears throat> that's my it's my theory i think i think how i think uh, verstappen just eats lots of street waffles as well But yeah, the, the, so there's a meme in sim racing about uh, I didn't cheat. We did it legitimately. We just got a, we got an Aero Boy setup. Thank FFB. <laughs> uh, yeah, totally. But I'm uh, at the higher end. Yeah, I'm. Well, so this is the other thing as well. So apparently in Germany, go karts are set up way more oversteery than they are in the UK. Weirdly, but I don't know. It'd be interesting. I don't know. I need to talk to some. Um, I've never talked to a Formula One driver about the difference between uh, go karts and things, but that'd be interesting. Next time, I, if I get a chance soon, I'll, uh, <laughs> that's something I'll bring up. I didn't cheat, Kirith. We actually did it legit. So, <laughs> what's the Fanatec news today, Kirith? Um, like so, I I would imagine that like the sort of faster carts. But what I'm talking about is, um, yeah, I'm not saying that go carts aren't oversteery, but I, I'm talking about when someone's like eight and how those go carts are set up, or like eight to twelve, and then how how that would compare to how a full like maybe it's not even about oversteer. The point is. If you have driving sims with the dynamics that are generally like the dynamics of a full-size car and you learn how to drive that on mental oversteery crazy driving sim setups you're going to develop much better than someone that only does go-karting right especially if you're like seven five to ten years old and you've then dri already driven every formula one car through history in a driving simulator really really quickly and then um and then you're also go-karting at the same time you're learning a completely different dynamic and approach to driving like a go-kart fundamentally drives differently to a full-size car even more so now because formula one cars are shit but like it if we went back to the 90s not so much because 90s i think 90s formula cars were actually a lot more like go-karts <laughs> Did anyone tell when this TED talk started? <laughs> Kick, breaking fan of tech news. Uh, um, there's some really good kart channels out there. We like that go through the differences in karting. Uh, what, what's his? Uh, I've forgotten the name of the guy. Um, there's a guy that does loads of kart videos. Um, uh, it'd be really interesting to talk to like. Um, to actually have a decent conversation like not just like an interview it'd uh, be nice to sit down with like decent drivers ah uh, the show this sh bro is creating the ultimate driver the show with guy called Kir uh, i don't trust that kirith guy to be honest anybody that that's that says eatery i, I lose all trust really can can you trust someone that says eatery i don't know if you can
A Fango, which setup do I go with? 618 spaceship. Sounds good to me. I'll go for this 618 spaceship. Is it front camber though, Canadian, or just camber all round? Uh, the percentage hasn't lowered, I've just not updated it. Right, we're doing this. Hypercard to Rafio. Take the fuel out. We're, do we're doing two laps of Nordschleife here, guys. Wish us luck. Let's hope this isn't like the KTM. Oh. Here we go. I should, we should be all right here. I'm good at this track. Oh, hang on. We got... AI will be shit at this. And AI's gone. <laughs> Why is this car so bumpy? Bloody hell. Okay. Why? This setup's terrible. Car's way too bumpy. <laughs> oh no 618 space we should have gone with the spaceship obviously always go with the spaceship as a fanatec employee I can say many things to debunk Kira oh here we go this feels better what is it with people with bouncy castle suspension? What? What are you doing, AI? <laughs> Just casually drives into the wall. This looks awesome with a bit of fog. I, I need I need to try that on the uh, updated pure. They've, they've added some new light like, fog effects. Oh, they weren't joking when they said space. It's all right. It's all right. <laughs> okay, when they said the setup was a spaceship, they weren't joking. Oh, P1's bloody gone. Oh, come on. As you can see, Kudos have nailed the aerodynamics. Don't care what anyone says. Oh, right, okay, right. We need to do this again. We need to break for that corner a lot more. <laughs> if you guys could all get on the bonnet rather than sitting on the boot, I'd appreciate that. Too many of you are in the boot. Ah... Oh. We need to we need to be in front of like the yellow car early. Ah, oh, I set the flaps wrong. Did you see that um guy that live streamed him his plane crash? Like he died in it. And it turns out that the pilots accidentally turned the rotors off. <laughs> like the uh, the angle of attack of the uh, propellers and then they didn't realize. They thought they were setting flaps. So, the, basically, the, they turned and then the plane fell out of the sky. Oh, my goodness. This yellow car's drunk. I mean, I don't know how good the AI is at the rest of the track, so I'm trying to just get ahead at the start here. We've learned this lesson before. Look at him go. Ah. Uh.
I mean, that's hardly. <laughs> Where's he going? <laughs> blue car just endos the uh, job. Tony Hawk's in the blue car. Right, here we go. Oh my god. I think some people are unfairly critical of the AI in this. I haven't seen any issues at all. <laughs> uh, that's the overtake I'd do in real life. <laughs> it's better safe than sorry. What a what a move, guys. Yes, this should be easy now. Just have to not crash. Bloody hell. Thing is, if AC2... Basically, if Kunos can make it so that the suspension isn't mental, which has always been... It's always been a Kunos issue. The tight, the curbing thing is basically fixed in terms of the single contact patch from like ACC fixed that. If they can make it so that AC2 doesn't have the severe input delaying graphical shit and lacking force feedback detail, I think even if AC2 lacks content, if I slightly better AI, you've got a really really good game. Ace, Ace, Ace Ventura car detective. Thanks everyone on YouTube for clicking the like button. Obviously you all did, we totally don't have 150 viewers and only 70 likes. Kirith, can you click the like button 150 times please? I don't know what our maximum... I don't know what the most likes we've had for these uh, AC Competitator TiVo stream, streams are. Oh, bloody hell. Textbook line. Oh, yeah. A a Ace should have... It should have a uh, online ranking mode. You want to go fishing? You can watch this while I was fishing. Short, presumably, fishing is one of the few activities where you can actually enjoy. If you mute the sounds, you could just have me on a tablet. Hello, reviewer for the tube. Like this, this would be the this would be what you watch while I was fishing. I mean, like if you were to go, oh, I want to go skiing. In fact, it's a bit difficult to watch live streams while I was skiing. Well, we passed the KTM race, and it wasn't because of setup. It was uh, obviously, uh, yeah, it was because of setup. I, I kind of, I want to do some racing with subs though. So, I'm, what I'm thinking of, like blitzing through these challenges, and then maybe as a maybe we do that, and then we do like a bit of racing with subs as well. But then I, I kind of we have to be careful with my arm, so. I don't know. You can tell it's got serious because I'm wearing gloves to sim race. <laughs> oh, Lewis, I'm turning into a sim racer. Oh, no. Like, I, I, did, I was determined I'm not a sim racer. Like, I'm a, a bold guy that likes force feedback. I'm not a sim racer. But here I am with gloves on, playing a video game. Oh Christ! It's like, it's like a it's a terminal disease. Starts with a G25, progresses to like a T300. Then before you know it, you have a sim rig. Well, like, no, you have a wheel stand. <laughs> then, then, you, then you're like. Then you're buying like a T slot. Then you're getting a H pattern shifter. Then you're buying a handbrake because oh, you have to have a handbrake for drifting and rally games. 
then you're buying like ultra wide monitors and shit. Then you're upgrading your computer. Before you know it, you're an absolute loser. And ah, oh, Jesus Christ. Then you're like gloves, gloves are the last thing. Playing video games with gloves on. Also, you can't drop, you cannot fly hot air balloons in fog. <laughs> How, what's, a, what's a Cessna meant to do when they're flying along VFR and then all of a sudden out of a cloud comes a hot air balloon? <laughs> this sim is totally unrealistic, guys. You do not fly hot air balloons in heavy fog. Mind you, you probably don't fly VFR in heavy fog either, but still. Well, there's a hidden race. Uh, was I happy before my G25? I got to miss that. What, what did he say? I would, oh shit, the AI is catching us. So we've, got, we've got to actually be quick. Oh shit, the AI is catching us. They normally get slower, but they've got faster. Oh, maybe it was the dot and get home. Uh, it's set up, it's, it's built into shader patch, it's really, really good actually. So, uh, do you know what I, I, I think, right, shader patch content manager needs to build an AC ranking mode built into content manager that's the first thing that you see when you load content manager multiplayer tab. And it's just and it's just AC stock content with uh, a, a race, and then because basically Content Manager is the default AC app, and then uh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> that's what that's what needs to happen. Flying through me. One content manager to rule them all. Oh, they're still we're still being chased by the AI. What's crazy is having done hot lapping on this uh, quite a lot in the Nordschleifer for, for the um, hot lap competitions. Um, we actually got pretty decent at the Nordschleifer. And uh, what's crazy is I was watching on boards hot, like fast, real world fast laps of the Nordschleifer. And they were taking exactly the same lines and uh, the sort of same sort of inputs and the way the car was like bouncing around and stuff was like really really similar to the to this sim but but what's mental is the hot laps i've been doing are not me trying to match a video it's just it's just me doing hot laps and the end result is something that happens to match up with the real life which is crazy like normally when you see like comparison videos often what people are doing in ace in any game when they do comparison videos they look at the video and then they purposefully drive it in a similar way to the video whereas normally when you if you drive a sim as fast as you possibly can you will find that it normally is slightly different to how one would approach real driving i'm sure at the alien level of ac that happens as well but you know Oh my god. <laughs> what was that? I think we just ran over a hedgehog. Yeah, it's surprising, isn't it? 
I get racing lines will probably always line up regardless of the sim. Well, it's not really just the lines though. What what I sort of mean is the corrections that are occurring. Oh my! Like, see that? Oh no! No, 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 no. Okay, we're good, we're good. That's a good place to speak because the AI can't really go around the outside there. Oh, this is going to be another alien, guys. We're going to be blitzing it today. Beautiful. All thanks to the Aero Boy Saviour... Fast boy. He's not he's not even that fast. He, he should just be called setup boy. Yeah, you can't say this so no, I think the the problem is with you for the tube is it's a mix of things. So I I've talked to some uh pretty like high up uh older drivers in motorsport like world champions and stuff and they um d they don't like sims at all uh because the sims that they use would have been complete shit whereas um lando verstappen and the newer the, the sort of kids uh go-kart kids that have grown up with sims they'll have grown up with assetto corsa and stuff so they're not shit like the, 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 a lot of older sim racers, a lot of sim racers, a lot of sim racers in general don't realise how complete shit a lot of commercial sim simulators historically were. They, they were absolutely shit, but no one, no one would tell them. Like, it would be like, um, they'd be, I'm not, right, so they'd be good for getting specific data, and they still would be valuable, they still make money, but from a driver's perspective, they would be absolute ass to drive. They'd just be a complete chore, be horrible. Um, whereas, from a driver's perspective, even something like iRacing, at least you would have the competitive component to make it compelling for them. Whereas, if you're just sat in like a, if you're sat in like a warehouse on some probably slightly laggy giant motion platform that's been chosen. 15 years prior <laughs> you know like with you going through a routine of tests that are for the team to determine what ECU settings or you know boring shit well you know you're not going to really enjoy it are you whereas if you've got your own little home simulator with iRacing AC whatever and then you can play whilst chatting with mates and you've also got an esports team or something well, that's not going to be shit, is it? <laughs> so. You can't. This track's no relax. This track's pure relax. You you can't remember any tip. No, you just have to learn the track. Once, you, once you've learnt uh, the track, Otto, you know what's coming up. And so it's you, you, you don't really have to. It's not like a rally stage anymore. And then it becomes really relaxing because you're like, oh, that's the line into that. And you're trying to get it set up for the next corner. And, it, and when you hook it up, it all flows. It all naturally... The car sort of ends up in the right position. And you, it's really nice. Uh, this car's a bit mental. But, uh, yeah, once you know it, it's awesome. Like, um, Nordschleife is absolutely shit until you've probably done about 10 hours on it. Maybe, maybe 20 hours. And then it just starts getting better and better and better. It's just a, it's a real chore to learn. Right, gold. And what, weirdly, what I've... So for me, it was Netcar Pro had a mod version of the track, which had really bad detail, but it was it was fun to learn. Uh, GT Sport uh, was a good way to learn it because it breaks it down into individual sectors. So it's a really good way to learn it. And GT Sport has chronic understeer issues, so... Um, if you go in slightly too high, it gets stuck in understeer. Um, so it forces you to, like, take the correct lines. I don't know. GT7 is probably the same. Alfa Romeo at Silverstone. Let's go. Oh, we'll have a... Let's update, guys. Are the complete... Oh, 64% completed Tetativo. 
I think after this next one, we're going to have a... Um, a Guinness out of the can just to annoy people. <laughs> right. The old Gran Turismo stream for pretty much, yeah. I, it's weird that more Sims don't break tracks down like that as a way to learn them. I think Sim devs are just it's small teams and they're just, it's hard for them to get anything out. We're probably all right with the defaults here. So what what was the tire thing? You're saying more... Um, what was it? Cam po more positive camber or more negative? More positive or toe? The race with the Lotus? Yeah, yeah, we did that, yeah. But what do we need to do with the camber? Was it camber or toe? Yeah, but what, does the toe need to be higher or lower? I can't, like, and what it, is it more positive or more negative? over here so it can be bigger yeah no but I mean what in terms of what's faster more negative. Hang on, toe is this right? Caster, caster is this. <laughs> toe is this. And so the more the more negative toe, the more outward. The more positive toe, the more inwards. Is that what it's relative to? Like which is in and which is out like which which is is positive into the car or is positive out from the car we're here for ac evo negative negative is out like that and positive is in okay Hang on, but this is so Kunos with their description. Raising the value makes the wheel gain negative. It gains negative. The, the, <laughs> the wording on the description is like two negative, two positives and two negatives makes it really confusing. Hang on, that's Camber. Hang on, we were talking about. <laughs> we were talking about toe. We were, what, what about Camber? Which one's Camber? Hang on. Caster... Caster's this, right? No. Caster's... Caster's this. <laughs> Caster is this. Camber is... Camber is this. And Toe is this. Oh, we can make a dance song about this. <laughs> yeah, we can make a dance song out of this. Do the toe. Do the camber. Do, I can't even remember. Do the caster. <laughs> it's all wrong. It's all wrong. Oh, I've got camber and toe switched. You never want your toe and your camber switched. 
Last time that happened, World War Three started. Hang on. <laughs> oh dear. I bet there's even more complexity to it as well. No, because it's dyslexia. I can't remember these things. I need like a graphic and then I'll be like, oh yeah. I, I, I kind of get it visually, but it's just how the words and stuff relate to stuff. This is this is where dyslexia takes over. <laughs> so if this is, you know, it's not a it, uh, fully intuitive subconscious process. Word, our words connect to things. It don't, it don't make any sense to me. It's all made up. All right, let's just do this. See what happens. Hopefully this, this car's awesome, so it should be should be too hard to win this. Oh, full speed back's too hard. Oh shit! Thanks for following. Welcome. I'm driving this like a normal DTM driver. That you know. How nice are these cars to look at? I'm sorry, but if you've ever seen one of these cars in person, they look amazing. And if you've ever seen one of these on a track, they're more impressive than Formula One cars. If you see one of these caning it down a track, it genuinely, they look incredible. And they sound amazing as well. The Kunos sound is a bit shit, actually, on this. Like, just look at them. <laughs> yeah, like, this, what, this, my motorsport is so shit. Like, you have stuff like this. Why not just keep having these? Like, this is a proper car. Look, it's square and boxy and, you know, sideways through corners. Like, really strong force feedback for, for in real life, you know, like mental steering torque so the driver has to wrestle the car ah oh. yeah I know it's terrible isn't it G I like look I I would uh, the, the good thing about GT3 I get it from like a business perspective and I get it from uh, if you're if you're really rich and you want to do some racing and basically you want to make sure that you're actually racing if you're spending like 50 100 to 300,000 pounds on a drive in a team you don't want to do that take time out of your work and everything for an endurance race only to be at the track and it's like oh the car's broken down so <laughs> you know i get that but um you know thing is i bet these cars if you were to rebuild these cars now using exactly the same sort of thing like but you, you use like modern modern processes to reduce the cost not modern processes to do it better but modern processes to reduce the cost and uh I bet you could rebuild these cars or something that handles basically the same and looks the same and sounds pretty similar and it would be way more reliable and way cheaper than modern GT3 cars so why not just do that Like like a new the new Ferraris cost seven hundred and fifty thousand pounds to buy. I don't. I think these cars. No, I know, but they're not like the premium. I know you get like kits and rebuilds and stuff. I've seen one in person. They're really, they're awesome, but they're not really they're they're not like a proper race series. No, I know. I've been to it. I've watched it like multiple places. It's awesome, but it's. It doesn't have like the commercial backing behind it, does it? So that's that's the thing. So then that actually, so weirdly, that makes it end up costing more because okay, yeah, it's cheaper to do in a sense, but you can't capitalise on it through the marketing. So it actually is more expensive in many ways. If 
you see what I mean? Like, if, you, if you're running a team, if you know that someone is going to pay for a seat or you know it's a prestigious event, well, then you can sell advertising for more, you've got more tickets, you then, from an operational perspective, it's the net cost or the profit is more or the net cost is lower. Exactly, exactly, Skywork. And that's the problem, isn't it? <laughs> the commercial brands are tied to shit. Right, I, I don't understand. Who watching motorsport genuinely looks at like... Right, so look at Formula One now. And the new the new um, cars uh, for 2026. And they're like, wow, we're going to put bigger batteries in them. 50-50 battery and 50 fuel. And it's like, and we're going to make the cars big. And uh, well, now we're going to have active aero. And it's like, your average viewer of Formula One do, doesn't give a shit. Like, the, the, what, what people care about with Formula One is drive to survive. If you're talking about the mass market, it's, oh, does this driver I like from drive to survive do well? Or they're people that are just being nationalists and they're like, oh, I'm Belgian, I'm Dutch. Belgian would be more appropriate, but I'm Dutch, so I want Max Verstappen to win. Or I'm British, so I want uh, Hamilton or uh, Norris to win or Russell or whatever. That's what people watch sport for. They don't what they're not they're not watching Formula One for Oh, is it green? Is it a green tech and it's like Also Oh guys, it set me off on this rant. <laughs> The whole bloody uh, green thing in Formula One when you have trucks of equipment and flying teams all around the world every week. Oh, we've got to make the cars green. Like, it's like, well, hang on a minute. If you actually give a shit about the environment, you're not going to be burning through five, uh, a thousand sets of tyres. Are you moving all this again? Like... Make that part green. 100%, if you're going to do the green thing, make all the lorries everyone uses fully electric and, and be innovators in fully green transport and emphasise that and make a big thing out of it and be really proud about it because that would actually really genuinely trickle down to the to other companies and stuff because they'd be like, oh, Formula One is like the leaders in... Okay technology for mo for logistics and doing it fast and wow it's formula one like not only is the sport the best drivers but it's also this technology for all that stuff that should be part of it it's so unimaginative like oh dear so we get the we get the worst we get insane polluting from formula one and then a completely shit sport where even the drivers they won't say it publicly, but in private, are like, this is shit. So, <laughs> it's like, ugh. Oh. Can't do EV semi trucks. No, but maybe, maybe you can use, um, like, some kind of green fuel, or may maybe there's, I don't know, there's probably, there, there'll be lots of innovations that can be done. I, you know, I'm not saying what they are. There's just probably things that could be done that could then be promoted. I, I, I just feel like there's this huge industrial corporate machine that could actually be leveraged for even within the even within the benefits of current the current capitalist model. Uh, it, it it could be uh, I think it could be you know the even within the current model and systems that are fundamentally broken, I think there's a lot that there's a lot of room. Yeah, let's just go. Like, they should just have shifter cars. Yeah, sorted. Yeah, but the the, the, the point is, I'm not saying. I'm not saying that other logistics, that motorsport's the biggest polluter in the world, but what I'm saying is if you are promoting your sport as being green, but then ignoring the logistic component, which is the fundamental polluting aspect, that is actually 
that's the real issue of all this stuff, isn't it? It's like that you can't just make your cars green, but then everything else is like a disaster. <laughs> it's exactly like going, ah, oh, here at Apple, uh, we're really passionate about green, so we've made the new Apple phone out of uh, this this material that's that's five percent more recyclable. But but uh, no, ev everything else, uh, all the batteries, all this moving it around, everything else is is actually still just completely destroying the environment. But but guys, focus on focus on this uh, polymer we've used. <laughs> you know. It's like the it's like the um, it's like the recycling thing as well, where you have all this promotion around consumer recycling, and it's like, no, the consumers are barely doing the damage. It's it's large corporate um, industry with these crazy processes and no motivation to stop using plastics altogether. Or like, and when it comes to like uh, recycling plastics, in many ways, burning plastics is actually probably better, even though it doesn't seem better, but it probably is better. Like if you if you look at all the different angles of it, burying plastics in certain locations might actually be better than recycling, or you know, just not using plastics at all would be the actual thing. But that would require um, the the fundamental uh, large financial interest to do something but you know they're not likely to do anything so we have to put the burden on the average like consumer that's just like trying to live life well that's it board and clue like so for a formula one car if you if you want a vehicle to test a driver's skills to the limit and you want racecraft and racing like actual tactical racing to be the focus uh, you need the car to be as light as possible, basically. Light equals faster left-right movement. The heavier a vehicle is, the, like, it's just physics. Like, it's got more inertia. It doesn't, like, yeah, you, maybe you can have a higher top speed, but you can't change the direction of the object if it's heavy and if it's longer as well. So you need the vehicle to be as short and as light as possible if your goal is pure racecraft. There's going to be an arbitrary point of where you divide that up and you say, okay, well, a go-kart's too much racecraft, maybe, especially for the size that tracks are. So you probably go, this is a specific... This is the size of car for the width of this track. Um, but, yeah, like, the modern race cars are like bloody stretch limos. Formula One cars, it's insane. <laughs> so dumb. Oh, AC's crashed. <laughs> Oh no. That's weird. That's the first crash we've had. It's crash crashed. Because I've been progressing too quickly. So I, I think it saved the uh, progress opener. Star Fox. They blame, they blame us for buying packaging. I know. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not totally against certain initiatives. Like I think uh, charging for plastic bags. I think that. Uh, it's, it's, oh, I didn't save it. <laughs> We've done it, but it didn't save it. Absolute scam. Oh, come on, Kunos. I'll have to do it again. That's weird. We got the Steam achievements, though. Let's do it. Let's do it again. Oh, no, hang on. Maybe if I click Sync Progress, it will uh, fix it. Let's try that. Uh, yeah, the plastic bag thing. I think the, the amount that you... The money that you pay for plastic bags should go into something else, so that so companies shouldn't profit from it. Oh, there you go, just had to sync progress. Um, oh, Nordschleife in the McLaren, Nissan. I mean, <sighs> yeah, the, the the bag thing's quite good though in terms of just making people not use shit loads of plastic bags. So that's that's a and it's such a negligible amount of money. It's just enough to make people go, oh, that's. Let's use less plastic or let's use reusable bags. But then if people buy really chunky reusable bags that are worse, than <laughs> yeah. But I think on average, the, the data would suggest that that's actually works out for the better. So there are cases where recycling or, you know, these things, consumer stuff can work well. But from all the research I've done, specifically on um, 
recycling is a load of bollocks. Yeah, yeah, I just, I just, uh, we've done it. We. Yeah, nothing beats drinking from a cardboard straw because you get to taste cardboard when you drink. It's perfect. Right. Do we need to set up this? I'm going to get my uh, Guinness, I think, to celebrate. So but good, so fast set up. <laughs> so but, so fast set up. I mean... There's a lot of dyslexic. <laughs> There's a lot of dyslexics writing these titles. Um, right, here we go. I, I think for for drinks. It's um is way nicer um drinking a drink out of a glass bottle than a plastic thing. And flavour as well. Um so like I mean glass might be worse for the environment and everything, but purely from an experience of um a lot of drinks, when you drink them out of a glass bottle, I think it they taste better. Just psychologically or whatever's going on. But then glasses are pain in the arse to get rid of and stuff. But to be honest, people shouldn't even be drinking fizzy drinks and stuff. So <laughs> we should just get rid of Coca-Cola entirely because they're not they're not good for you. So in the game of muscle utopian society future, fizzy drinks have been made illegal. Only tea. We, the only legal drink is tea. Right, I'll be back in a second, guys. Just getting a getting a Guinness. <laughs> Get rid of tea and milk. What are you on about? <sighs> right. How's everyone doing, though? Like, it, what day is it today? Feels like a, a Wednesday. What day is it? Oh, it's Thursday. <laughs> Okay, let's go. Cheers, everyone. Ever boiled a kettle? What? Every boiled kettle is one less lap for a form Formula E team. <laughs> Think about the harm. Right, let's go here, guys. Thanks for clicking the like button on YouTube, by the way. Might get might pass a hundred likes. You never know. If I keep saying it. I don't know what happened to the like fish. We did have a fish that was a like. I, I, let me just do you guys a little advert for you here. This video is sponsored by the 3DFX Voodoo 2 graphics card. 
megabytes of RAM, 100 megahertz of processing power, 800 by 600 maximum supporting resolution, SLI for double the speed. Your PC won't ever need more power. The Voodoo 2! No longer available. There you go. Stream is sponsored by the Voodoo 2 and the Gamer Muscle mug. And uh, also, we have the Gamer Muscle shirt available from the Gamer Muscle merch store. Uh, what else do we have? Oh, we have everything. Mugs, shirts, shirts, mugs, mug, shirt, shirt, mug, mug, shirt, shirt, mug. There you go. Let's go racing. Hello, Ultima. Ultim hate. Here we go. No, you're a mug if you buy the shirt, though. <laughs> What? <laughs> Hang on a minute. <laughs> right, let's not use that setup. What is that about? Oh, I clicked exit. I clicked the wrong button. I think geared it not for the start of the race. That went well. <laughs> that <laughs> that went that went really well. Oh, there we go. be towed around the track faster here we go oh can't get the parts the import fees are too high In the future, there'll be one graphics card we all pay to stream off. Well, have you noticed with computing that it's alternated repeatedly from the idea of having personal computers to centralised computers? It's like gone forwards and backwards. Like, it started off with centralised computers. Then it went to, like, personalised computers... Then it went to centralised computers. Now we're sort of in this mixture of cloud and personal. But then there's like people like with AI, they want to they want to make it more. I mean, cloud computing is just centralised computing with a different name. Yeah, we seem to have like, and it makes sense actually. You have if you can produce high performing personal devices for for a lot of the mundane stuff. You might as well do that locally. Like, if you can... It's just going to be a thing of data transfer. It, like, you'll have a limit of what you can... What data you can send. So, basically, if it became the case that you could send an infinite amount of data wirelessly with no latency, then you really wouldn't bother with localised computing at all. Because it'd just be easier to have all the computing done in, like, specifically designed buildings. But given that that's never really likely going to happen, because you can't, even in perfect conditions, you can't always get perfect signal. There'll always be a physics, a physical physics delay. So I think you'll always have personal computing to some capacity. Even with the AI stuff... They will condense, uh, so like, you'll end up with large language models that condense specific u u utility of a large language model into a pre-printed chip that effectively does a hyper-specific um, machine learning type process. Like, so, so, um, uh, so, so it doesn't really need to be. So it doesn't use loads of processing. It's basically, it's basically a lookup table, a lot like a large language model lookup table. Exactly how uh, simulators work now. Like you can, you can build a tire model that's insanely complex, 
but all that all that complexity is pre-calculated uh, by like some by over a long period of time or a very fast computer. Same for like flight sims, driving sims, and then in order to execute that in real time, it's then the pertinent data is put into a lookup table so that it doesn't have to be processed when you're actually playing the simulator. The the simulator you're playing just goes oh if you've got if this is the thing that's occurring this is the output and, and it so it becomes an issue of uh, memory rather than processing which is basically with the if you put a large language model on a chip effectively the chip will already know like the question you, you'll ask a question and it will go to the pertinent lookup table response there you go They want you to pay for the energy. Yeah, it's a weird one with computing, like where you draw the line between how much, um, as an individual. So, like, there's that whole thing in the ninety. Like, there's so there's a cut, like the Linux computer thing. Like the idea that it's your computer. You buy whatever components you want to build your computer for your specific thing, but you own it, like self ownership. And that was like a really big thing in the 80s, well, 70s, 80s, 90s, and 2000s. And then now, companies effectively, like the whole sort of, you're renting everything, you're renting your house, you're renting your phone through like a, a loan or something, you're renting access to all the software, you, you don't actually own a license to anything, like you don't, you don't actually own it, you're renting a license. And basically what it is, is a way of removing individual uh it's a way of stealing wealth from people effectively because if you don't own something you can't sell it yourself so you're actually removing value from from things in a sort of machiavellian subtle way but you're you're saying that you're not you're saying oh it's more convenient because it can be updated remotely or oh we we will roll we will give you the next best thing but it's like you, you you had that before because you could just buy something before and then sell the previous thing whereas now you buy it but you can't sell it like your money is completely gone you don't own anything so uh yeah own ownership is uh it seems to be going away i <laughs> bring back nintendo power glove glove uh star blue if buying isn't owning piracy isn't stealing uh, yeah, well, that's a, that's more to do with copyright infringement. I mean, you look at stuff like uh, Adobe, but then actually, on the other side, companies going down this model of rental services. The a lot of people that are somewhat educated realise it's bollocks. So, I like, for example, I use DaVinci Resolve. And I, if Adobe wasn't uh, stupidly expensive, and also if their stuff was coherent through all the different apps, then I, I then I would use Adobe stuff. But when you, you buy DaVinci Resolve, you don't even need to buy it. But let's say you buy it for like 120 pounds, um, you you sorted, <laughs> you got it, and that's so much better. I think there's other ways to monetize things where you can where I. Because you still want businesses, so it's good for like iRacing to be able to run as a service. It does mean that they've got a so they've got a cash flow that allows them to keep the service going, and um, so that's not it's not always a negative thing. But I think there's a there's a I think what you need is you have ownership. For specific stuff, and then you can st a service model can still work well for consumables. So for for stuff where you're um, like i racing servers or I don't know whatever, you you could still have a fee. I I don't know. I think there's I think there's an in between compromise in terms of what's actually good. Uh, Richard B, you could buy a lifetime pass for something on the cloud. Doesn't matter. Yeah, well, that, that's the other. Yeah, so for, yeah, if if you have the option of being able to buy a lifetime pass, I think that's different again, isn't it? I mean, for me personally, I would much rather pay a lump sum up front to buy something rather than I, I hate renting stuff. I always buy my phones outright. Um, 
But then there's a balance between cash and utility. So with certain things, it makes more sense to rent them because the cash that you have free from not putting the lump sum into that specific thing means you can put that money, invest that money and use it in different ways which actually means that you get more utility from the money. So renting in, in, or, or paying in some scenarios, renting actually makes more sense than buying. So you, you, should, you need a consumer choice. I think that's the problem. If you don't have the choice there, that's the issue. As long as you've got the consumer choice, it doesn't really matter. Like if, if I can choose to buy a phone as opposed to renting it, and also, if people are educated to understand that renting a phone is completely shit, then, uh, then it's fine. Like Some people that might want to rent it can get that utility from it, but as long as it's not forced on you. Right. There we go. <laughs> Let's go! Should, we, should I do a poll on this? Do you think we can do this one in the first go? Start a prediction. Gold first go. Two minute prediction. There you go on Twitch. There you go. You guys love your predictions. You're off fishing tomorrow. I'll be tuning in to see how you're getting on, Neil, Neil MC. Where are you going fishing? Are you going fly fishing? I know. I always thought fly fishing must be really hard because if you think about it, a cod is like this big, you know. Uh, uh, a salmon is like this big. But flies, flies are only like, f f flies are only like this. Flies are like this big. So, like, fly fishers must be well skilled. Okay, my muscle, you are not funny. <laughs> if you make another joke like that, you will be recycled. <laughs> Can you imagine? Can you imagine if fly fishing was a real thing? <laughs> uh, woo I've got, I've, I've caught one. <laughs> okay, we're going, we're going. Jesus Christ! I thought it was a pretty good joke. Battlefield's huge, mate. I oh, was just. Okay, I think all the setups on this car, the gearing is a bit bad. Let's go. Three laps, easy. Oh, hello. Someone likes to break bias really far back. Goodness. What when you need to change brake bias? So if you want the car to oversteer more on braking you move the brake bias to the back if if the if the rear of the I've just been punted. I oh, know we caught it. <laughs> if you want the car if the car's too like the rear is snapping out too much you move the brake bias forwards. Basically. So if you want the car to turn into the corner more aggressively when you're braking, brake bias back. If you want it to turn in less aggressively, brake bias forwards. Can't park there, mate. <laughs> Bit of a drift drift line there. E Woo! Oh, 
Oh, this might actually be a relatively difficult challenge here, guys. <laughs> the AI is pretty quick. The green car in first. I hope it is. Hopefully we can blitz them on the uh, straight. Bloody hell. Do you know what? It, it does make sense wearing gloves. It, it does feel nice. But I, I get really warm wearing gloves. <laughs> New line. I'm, uh, we're, I'm using really nice uh, Sabelt gloves that they uh, kindly gave me when we did. If you go on my channel, uh, type in Sabelt Sim Rigs. Uh, I, we, we, last year we did a tour of their factory, it was awesome. And their new sim rings are really nice. They're re like really, uh, they're not cheap, but they're not crazy expensive. But they're, the seat, the formula seat's really good. But their T-slot sim rings look really nice as well. Look really nicely finished off. You imagine that this track is probably a tricky track for AI to drive. Well, maybe it isn't. Do you think it would be? Especially with other cars on the track. AI seems to really struggle when there's multiple cars. And then slow, tight corners, AI... AI tends to do flowing corners quite well, but... Uh, uh, sudden break zone corners AI, especially when there's other cars that's where AI messes up uh, now I've seen real NASCAR drivers use the barriers so I, I think it's perfectly legit Out that the car's lifting off the ground. <laughs> this car is pretty hooked up. Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? I think it's... Yeah. Yeah, it's strange how AI behaves. Look at this. You... We've got the YouTube viewers are beating the Twitch viewers. Twitch, Twitch can't understand AC. Twi Twitch is like iRacing land. It's really weird, actually. No, a AI doesn't even know what FFB is. Cancelled on Twitch. <laughs> T 
Twitch is like really game centric. Is it worth it? Uh, it depends. Like it's got it's got pros and cons. Oh dear, we, we might be too far back here. We might have failed. We might have to redo this. <laughs> I thought I'd just drift both those corners. Why not? P P one's way too far ahead. Yeah, I think I think we're gonna have to just uh, restart this, guys. Oh yeah. All right. Well, that was a good Twitch poll. <laughs> We need to we need to really pwn the start. There we go. Good start. Ah, uh, what? <laughs> the AI in this game are mental. <laughs> it's just AI just doesn't even bother taking a line that's even physically possible. We're using a, a, a custom setup. Oh man, this is hard. car has a lot of grip though. I know I need to move the donation thing a bit further over.
Why is this mental through there? <laughs> this car's a bit unhinged. Uh, or, uh, September, I think. Simulation Expo. Ah, uh, can we do? Take some fuel out. Carousel myself. Yeah, this car's crazy through there. What were you saying? What were what were the? Uh... Oh, we'll just go. Nah. Miss the start. Get out of the way. He brake checked me, guys. Oh, I understand. <sighs> Let's try doing that in a second, get the start. Can't do that in our racing. No, it's still better off doing it first. Oh, I don't know what you mean. I've not restarted once. I'm doing everything first time. We promise we we really need to get into second really early on. <laughs> the AI is absolutely mental on this. I got too used to cars that are really slidey on this track. Oh, 
You stupid green Lambo! Oh, I've got to get past him! Uh. No, I can't relax because P1's getting away. Is too much time. Thanks for following. Thanks for clicking the like button. Welcome to the insanity land. Small, small log. Welcome. Hello. Hello. <laughs> yeah, we got past the Lotus and we got past the crossbow. catching how good is this track guys so fun to drive especially when you've got a car that's a bit more grippy a bit more pokey Yes! Well, I think, we, I think we might have this in the bag, as long as we don't crash. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, we did it. We did the uh, KTM. You just need a setup. Uh, it's in his shed in the game now, called like Game of Muscle needs to learn how to drive or something. <laughs> it's all set up. As always, forget skill, forget talent. Oh, the KTM drift. Yeah, no, well, that's just, you have to be on a really high level of skill. Yeah, you, 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 never, you, won't, you won't ever do it, let's be honest. You'll, you'll never be as good as me. Only, only a few have mastered the psychological abuse that it takes to pass the KTM drift. Have you done the Audi drift as well? That was even worse, I think, in some ways. The KTM, KTM drift has left me traumatised. If I ever see a crossbow in real life now, I'm just going to have flashbacks. I've been permanently traumatised. Imagine if ACC drove like this. It'd be so fun doing Nürburgring stuff. Yeah, 
<laughs> the uh, the technique of jabbing on the handbrake. Oh, bloody hell, he's pulling away again. you got plenty of time, Gamer Muscle. Oh, well, I don't because he's, we're almost halfway through the second lap and he's bloody pulling away. Three point three seconds, bloody hell. Three point one. The optimism, three seconds, He's pulled away 3.8 seconds. Like, where did he get the time from?
Fucking hell. <laughs> Come on. Oh. Non alcoholic beer, it's fine. Probably need alcoholic beer, be better. That's technique. Pretty curve knocked us off the track. NASCAR skills, guys. Don't question it. Oh my god, come on. Yeah, we've done all the drag challenges. Nice relaxing game this. Take that AI! Take that! <laughs> Have some flashes! Hope the AI feels that.
Oh, the AI is ridiculous through the carousel. He's not a place to... Oh, fucking AI. Fucking AI. He broke. It's not a place where he break. He broke. The AI, the AI broke check me. Oh, unbelievable. Unbelievable. Absolutely scammed. He bloody broke check me on the, that part of the track. It's flat out part of the track. Oh no! Absolutely scammed. Now I've got to do the old bloody thing again. <laughs> the AI in this game! It's part of racing. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> it just stops the AI on the like most dangerous part, probably like with the most ridiculous places to break. Flat out while I was bouncing over curves. Oh, yeah, just slammed the brake on. Ah, oh, Kudos put that in. That, there's a button in Kudos offices. Jesus Christ. Here we go again. I enjoyed that. <laughs> okay, let's go. The track's fun to drive, so at least we got that. This car's not. This car's quite fun to drive. I can't believe I was like really intensely trying to catch up with the AI, only for it to just do a stupid random break out of the blue. I don't. I don't like ACC, but I do like the normalist. That is amazing. It's probably one of the. Probably one of the. Fun. One of the or not the best submission to practice, like. Uh, What's he doing? Fun, <laughs> the, AI, <laughs> the AI in this is unhinged, guys. Ah, oh, I might need to restart again. Oh, we should be okay. It's good training for eye racing this. I don't, I don't like ACC, but I do like the normalism. But that is amazing. See, it's probably one of the, probably one of the, well, one of the. It's a, it's, the a, it's one, one of those solar calculators like, in the shade. Uh, even a one, GT mods. I really, it's really good. It's the AI in this is Hal from uh, Space 2001. 
I can't break for that corner, Dave. I don't, I don't like ACC, but I do like the normalist. And that is amazing. So it's probably one of the, probably one of the, well, one of the or not the best simulation to practice. Like uh, even F1 or GT mods. They're really, it's really good. All right, let's go. Three point seconds. Three. Uh, the three sec. Three point seconds. Three seconds. <laughs> Basically, if you if you can complete AC, you can uh, win VLN in real life with your eyes closed, whilst being slapped in the face with a fish. fish very very good one pound fish come and have a look one pound fish come on ladies come on I like how he's five tenths faster through the carousel because the AI doesn't have any risk of losing the rear Throttle too soon. <sighs> Christ Almighty. Christ Almighty. F. Do it. Bloody doing it this time. Oh my goodness. He punted me off. It's not a track car. Come on.
Ah, oh, you got an official penalty. Filed by a Brit. Ah. Oh. Tut tut. You didn't. You probably didn't play the very serious and totally not arbitrarily ruled game of eye racing properly. And I bet your penalty was not filed by some vindictive weirdo. We've got to win the Nordschleifer. That's what this one is. This one is get brake checked by the AI on the final few corners and then repeatedly do the challenge again. Doing much better this time. Come on. I have a cup of tea to celebrate this if we actually finish this one. That's it. That's the real test, isn't it? That's that's the test of sim racing. It's how much will you put up with before you <laughs> before you break? How many how many setting knobs are you willing to tweak and adjust? And T slot sim rigs are you willing to build before your brain just goes no, ah no. water torture but with computers uh, you move to flight simulators and then when that breaks you you move to train simulators and then you die of old age could be worse you, you could be living in Birmingham yeah we got we should have this as long as I don't crash what are the stipulations the stipulation is 100% Everything, 100%. Absolutely 100%. It, it, it's self-explanatory. 100% is 100%. All Steam achievements, everything. 100%. Hello, John Hartley. Hope you're well, man. Let's click the like button on YouTube, we're on 124 likes. Let's get to 150 and then I will recycle everybody. <laughs> Thanks everyone that supported us as well. Five donation in whatever your currency is and you get to go on the amazing supporters list. 
Thanks for everyone that's a channel member. You can be a member for free by joining Prime and linking it with Twitch, YouTube, Patreon. We have everything. If you hate yourself, you can hate yourself even more. Thank you very much, everyone that's already supported us. This message, that was a party political broadcast for the force feedback party. Come on, we, we gotta do this. The dream. Focus on the cup of tea at the end of the finish. He got away like five seconds. The curbing. Rear left touched the curb. Ah, oh, the curbing is so ridiculous on this. <laughs> Rear left just tapped the curb. Off. It was also like, because the front didn't touch it, but the rear wheels come out slightly further. I didn't even go onto it much. It's just like a little bit. Oh, my God. <sighs> Absolutely curbed. Curbing in AC turns... Uh turns AC's tyre model into iRacing tyre model. Physics off! <laughs> oh 
Ah, oh, damn. Oh, we're barely touching the curb. Butter curb. <laughs> I remember a young lad said, do it in one try. What's funny is if you're not on the accelerator at all, it's fine. That's why they put the curb there, it's to make it more slidey, to make it more tricky. I'm getting a cup of tea. Don't need dinner. Right, back in a minute. Well, I'm not on a diet, I'm just eating healthy. <sighs> We're getting well good at the Nordschleifer. Oh, yeah, let's make the uh, challenge thing a bit smaller so you guys can see the delta. The uh, donator thing. Thanks, everyone. Oh, see if that. There you go. What a high skill position in there. Oh, I definitely need a cup of tea. Cities like Birmingham in a shambles. To be fair. I am the champion of the ninja. Oh, days of blunder. I have brain damage. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Don't we all? Don't we all? Really appreciate that. Thanks for that. Three, three times, three months of being a sub. Thank you. Yeah, but I've got to make the tea and then it has to cool down. <sighs> Should we have a, we have a YouTuber versus Twitch challenge? Right. Um, well, how can, how can we do a Twitch versus YouTube walk? Says there's, there's 113 people on YouTube and 113 on Twitch. Um, how would they do battle? Well, 
which 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 is better, Twitch or YouTube? Type it in chat. You spend a whole day, yeah. Probably takes about I say about twenty hours to get reasonably okay at the track. But you probably want to just spend like three hours a day and then sleep each time, and then your brain consolidates information. Uh, the t Twitch viewers go up and down, you know. They they, uh, they come and go. It's just how they are. Uh, I don't know what this car is. Kind of handles a bit like a BMW, but... Yeah, my muscle buffering. Yeah, my brain's buffering. Ah. Oh. <laughs> right, I'm back in a second, guys. Get a cup of tea.
there. Oh, why's the music stopped? Hello. Oh, dear. Oh, I did the expo first time. <laughs> the setup, insta win. Oh, here we go. Bloody Kunos. <laughs> I really, I really need to get the new uh, Pure and stuff installed, it'd be awesome to see what it's like. Oh, we should probably have a break from doing these mental challenges. Yeah, well, the, the Twitch crew uh, come and go, come and go. It's, it's, when the adverts play, they're like, oh, I don't know what these adverts. But, uh, you know, that's how it is. I've got some, uh, some chicken breast in the air fryer. We need some breast energy. What's going on there?
We're never, never there. Right, 2.8 seconds. This has been pretty hard. <laughs> pretty tricky challenge, this one. I, I make coffee instead of tea. That's how desperate things are getting. Well, the adverts do help uh, pay my electric bill and stuff, so, you know. <laughs> I know adverts are annoying, but uh, it's a way... It is a way for me uh, to make money, so... Uh What's, what's a shame is that YouTube don't have... I don't know if you become a channel member on YouTube if you still get ads. But on Twitch, if you become a member, you, you don't get ads, which is quite good. I think that's how it should be. Because I think what, what you need is... People should have an option to be able to watch something without having to pay, and they can support by watching adverts. Or if, they, if someone does pay, then they should have a completely ad-free, you know... That's why. That's my view. That's why I never understood Sky and stuff. Like you pay, I don't have Sky, but like you pay shitloads for Sky or like F1, like the proper Formula One stuff. Pay shitloads for it, and then it's all adverts all over the place. Like, hang on, I would rather pay a lot for something, but have no adverts at all. Like I, I hate adverts. But if I'm not paying, fair enough. You know, stuff needs to be funded. But it's always obnoxious ads as well. In fact, I, I would even pay... I'd be willing to pay less, but have, like, actual ads that aren't shit for stuff that I really hate. That's the problem, is you get ads for things that I'm totally, like, politically against. So I, I don't I don't want to be reminded of this of shit. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? If Especially if I'm... If I'm doing... Oh, fucking cabs! It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. If I <laughs> if I'm doing uh, something for fun, I don't want to be exposed to crap. Uh, why don't we have people in chat when I complain about the curbs going, "Ah, oh, skill, skill. You just need to learn how to drive." Just what? What? You know? Surely that's what we need. Or is it that AC players aren't dumb and go, oh yeah, no, the curves are a bit stupid. Game of Muscle, you only ever complain when you crash. You only ever complain when you... <laughs> the stupid shit that people say. That's not really how it works. So, there's t so TV licensing in the UK is if you watch live TV, you need a TV license. And um, if you if, so, if you've got like an aerial or you're watching live TV, the TV license people can, can knock on your door. But if you register and you say, oh, "I don't have a TV, I don't watch live TV," then they, then they, it's fine, they, they, you know. And you don't have to let the, the TV licensed person, you don't have to let them into your house if you don't want to. They, they don't have any, they're not policemen. So, at best, they could peer through the window and go, oh, it looks like they've got a TV, so we're going to do this, which you could then dispute if you wanted to. Most of it's just, um, What's it called? Like, like most of it is uh, designed. So there's a lot of people that should be have it, should have a TV license, but they don't have one. And then the letters and the approach of it is designed to scare people into getting a license. And the thing, is, the problem is, so I mean. 
the, um, the the problem is is that it should really be done as a as a tax, and it should be taxed more aggressively for people that have shitloads of money. So, and and also, it should basically be like. So actual, like, you know, decent news, like uh, World Service or actual arts investment or stuff that's actually good, like, um, like a lot of the, be, like the certain um, more experimental programs. So like in the, in the 90s and 2000s, there was a lot more, like, more experimental comedy, which is maybe commercially a bit risky. That is exactly what that sort of national broadcaster should be doing through a tax system. So they're not... So so you can run more experimental programming. That is precisely what you should have. But it should be... People paying for it, it should be people that can afford it. Like, And then it should be like education focused as well. So like the bulk of it, like open university, all those kind of things. Or even even now you have stuff like Khan Academy and like really good YouTube resources. A national broadcaster should be about licensing that really good, like good quality documentaries, good quality education stuff, and uh, then delivering that through a really streamlined service. It doesn't have shitty adverts on it. So, the problem is the BBC is largely being co opted by uh, conservatives that allow for like left-leaning music, arts and crafts stuff, but anything that's like uh, like economics, politics, is all right, right wing or neo, neo-liberal at best. <laughs> so, and so what they do is they go, oh, everyone's complaining, no one's happy, that's because the BBC is uh, actually doing things right because it's in the middle. And it's like, well, no. It's not in the middle at all. Like, all the news is incredibly conservative. And and, it, and it's... And as you would expect from a national broadcaster, it's entirely pro-establishment. <laughs> like, it's... It's inherently promoting of the royal family, for example, and the, the you know, all that stuff. Like, it's inherently defensive of the like government by default like the establishment it's, it's not anti-establishment it, it by its nature it's pure pro pro whatever the incumbent establishment is which is as i say that's not unusual for any national broadcaster now bbc's right wing the, the only left-wing stuff you'll see on the BBC is... Oh! Is... Fucking hell. Is comedy, which nobody takes seriously because it's comedy, or music and arts, which nobody takes seriously because it's music and arts. Maybe a little bit of sports stuff. But anything... Like... Just look at any of, like, Question Time or news nothing there's nothing on there that would question the fundamental tenets of the like of, of basic the current uh, system that we operate in like even if you agree or disagree with it, it doesn't really matter there is really no like that like all the framing from news reporting is all based under the idea that oh every uh, c- current capitalism works totally fine it's all fine like it's the 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 framing of everything is within the current not questioning the current paradigm cbbc's heavily left what do you mean by it's heavily left wing <laughs> What do you mean by heavily left wing? Uh, what the the uh, the kids the kids characters aren't going around murdering each other? <laughs> but the problem is, some people confuse left wing with just like not being evil, like <laughs> like like uh, you know. 
I'm not talking about far left. Like, but basically, if you start going far, far left, you basically just go back into being fascist. But like, vaguely, like, oh, be kind to people, uh, be welcoming to people. Don't really, race doesn't matter. That's that. Like, maybe you could call that left wing, but it's not really. It's just being not completely stupid. Like, if you were to have a broadcaster that was entirely operating on evidence-based production in terms of, like, they're not, they're not politically motivated, they're going by, what does the evidence suggest? They would be described as being uh, far left by a lot of people because, even, like, as I say, even if they were operating entirely by what is the available known evidence on stuff, they would be described as far left. Or, or it's like it's like the uh, oh cock! <laughs> no! One final lap. Ow! You shit! Super woke. Yeah, it's like the t okay. What do people mean by the word woke? So, right there's degrees of wokeness like first of all people use the word woke randomly uh, they don't actually define what they're saying so does someone mean woke the idea of just being nice to other people for some people that's what woke means like <laughs> it's such like an open term that people don't define they might as well say what they actually mean oh see I don't know what's, what's see oh Canadian BC yeah sorry I thought <laughs> I thought you were saying CBBC. Children's... Yeah. But that's what people say, though. There's a big thing online with people getting really upset by... With children's broadcasting being too, like... Uh... Incorporative. So, like, I... So, the thing that I think is shit is when you have, like... Women Ghostbusters... Which I think is fundamentally sexist and completely counterproductive to actually celebrating people that identify as a woman or people that are, are physically have like ovaries or whatever you want to call it right um the, the point is you can have like good programs like good things which are have female leads or male leads don't really matter uh, so i would say like cynically just remaking something with women that is that was what i would describe as as a sort of woke like shit woke but if you actually genuinely go right, no, we're gonna, we're gonna, um, we've got uh, like a great story that has a strong female lead. Well, that's not being woke, is it? That that's just doing a good story, and that's how it should be. But I don't, I don't think people use. That's not how people use woke. The term woke. People use the term woke when people are just like, oh, we we, you know. People, people basically just call humanism being woke. Like, oh, the environment should be considered. Oh, global warming's an issue. Uh, oh, uh, there's in various cultures, uh, certain groups have got more of an advantage due to the history of that culture. They're not guilty, or the the, the people in that culture aren't guilty themselves, and you know uh, shouldn't have pride or negativity, but. In certain cultures, certain groups in those cultures have more advantages than other groups in those cultures. So just being aware of that is that's not like woke. It's just like that's reality, isn't it? Like I personally will, uh, I, I will have had many benefits by having a British accent and a middle class upbringing. I mean, what what are the chances that I would have been invited to loads of stuff in Europe and? Uh, my channel, this channel be like vaguely successful if I didn't have the ability to uh, to, to communicate relatively clearly and have a, a bog standard British accent. So I'm aware of that advantage that I've received. So, you know, that's not being woke. It's just like, well, that's just the reality, isn't it? Like, just as if you're, if you were a woman getting into Formula One now, or like motorsport, or, or like less so on Twitch streaming, but like for a period, if you were like a moderately attractive woman, 
you have a bunch of advantages that a white male wouldn't have because there's a cultural push to get more women into stuff to promote uh, uh, promote women so you would you have an advantage you'd be aware of that advantage oh fuck <laughs> God. I had at this curbing. You'd be aware of that advantage, wouldn't you? And you go, okay, yeah, well, now that's something that's probably not quite fair, or like that's just how it is. It doesn't mean that you wouldn't take advantage of the uh, take advantage of it. I swear, guys, the curbing in this is absolutely insane with this car. Yeah. So people use the word woke as a. They just use it as a way to just say nothing. It's the setup. We were so close. We got my chicken here. Yeah, like people, like. If someone was to go, oh, I'm going to be aware that, like, let, so let's say um, you you have a, a minority, it moves into the region where you live, um, or like someone like, let's say you lived in a predominantly black area and then some white people moved in, or you lived in a white area, some black people, or Asians, or whatever, someone, someone like from a different, uh, just different culture, different, uh, like, skin colour or something, you would be aware, if you're not a complete tit, you would go, oh, I'm pretty sure that there's a lot of dumb people around here that probably give them more abuse. So I'm going to go out of my way a bit to, to be like, to make it clear to them that they're welcome. Because you want people to feel welcome. So like, I wouldn't necessarily, you wouldn't necessarily go, oh, I need to be more welcoming to, to these other people. You'd still be nice to everyone, but you'd be like, oh, look, considering what you know about how things generally operate, you, you'd be like, oh, okay, so... That's not being woke, is it? It's just being, being nice. <laughs> uh, NASCAR's woke. They only turn left. Yeah, have you noticed that? Like, also, the woke insult is thrown at, like, uh, the left more than I think it's thrown at the right. But you could use it the same way to do it. Like, it's just so ill-defined. No, don't talk to them. I'll, I'll just avoid them, to be honest. Ah, oh dear. Woke is 100% left, and you're... Well, what... Right. What do you mean by you're a centrist? Oh, honestly, because... I Right, this is another th thing that's really stupid in politics. I'm not saying you're stupid, but right. People go, oh, I'm a centrist, and it's like, well, you're probably not. Like what? So what? So you what? What do you do? You go. You, what do you do? You like go? Oh, the Overton window for what's acceptable. Oh, there's some really crazy people over here, or, or like, oh, whatever. I'm just going to put myself in the middle, rather than like you know that shouldn't be how it works. Like you, you go. Oh, what's the evidence for something? That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> You're far, far right. No, but this is what I, like people say. Oh, I'm a centrist, and what they really mean is, oh, I'm not actually going to consider stuff, and I'm just going to say I'm a centrist to come across as someone that's more reasonable. <laughs> it's like a cop out. Yeah, most people think that they're reasonable, and most people put themselves in the centre. Whereas I know that I put, I'm a full-on uh, democratic socialist. Uh, I, I'm like there with my big flags and uh redistributing food and uh you know <laughs> storming storming the government I, I don't know i don't know what what you're supposed to do uh, if half the country has right leaning views and the other half has left if you have a broadcaster heavily subsidized by taxpayers the content should represent both sides no the content should represent what is evidentially the most realistic reality that's like me going it's, it's exactly the same situation as going 
Ah, oh, we've got a science programme here, and it's about um, the costs of the International Space Station and whether or not it's worthwhile scientifically. In order to discuss this, we have a scientist that's worked with NASA, uh, they've retired, they've done all this stuff, and they also understand the research, and they built, they're an astronaut as well, and we have a flat earther. Because we've got to be fair and balanced, because here's an educated person that's in the field that knows everything about it and has been heavily involved in it and is likely, you know, clued up on it. And here's someone that's a complete moron that is the complete opposite end of the spectrum. It's like, no. And then what? You put someone in the middle of that that's someone that's not a flat earther and not a NASA person in order to be fair and balanced. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. It's just obviously so stupid. You, you basically, there's, what you would have is ev things being as evidence-based as possible, and then there are certain areas where you can, there's a, a hypothetical debates, where which aren't really left or right, it's just like, oh, I, that, this, I think, for whatever reason, this would be a better way of doing it. Like, for things where there's no real evidence for you to really know either way, you could then have a debate on why why you think from your subjective viewpoint this political way of doing stuff might be better or why someone else might think something else so so it's a, a, not a disingenuous conversation pretty much all the conversation now that you see in the media is f basically a right-wing uh, capitalist disingenuously arguing for ways to maintain more wealth that's the like the the main because they control the papers so they set the political narrative on what you can and can't discuss because people base everything on what they're aware of this is exactly why like gt3 is popular in sim racing because most people haven't driven all the different cars in different simulators or watched lots of different racing so they don't know what is better or worse quantifiable racing what they do know is porsche ferrari as a brand and what have you and that the servers are full with those cars so so the, the Overton window of what you can drive in racing simulators is bloody GT3 cars, even when they're demonstrably shit compared to a whole bunch of other options. <laughs> it all comes back to sim racing. You know. <laughs> who, started, who started this off on that? I'm going to get my chicken nuggets. <laughs> Yeah, we, 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 we brought it back to sim racing. I'm a flat earther. I must be far right. Uh, right. Right. The analogy for the centrist thing as well is like if you've got like imagine it was an aeroplane, the aeroplane analogy. I've just invented this off the top of my head. It's genius. You, you can't fly an aeroplane if one of the wings is on fire it doesn't matter if it's a left or right wing or where you put the cockpit if the wing is on fire it won't fly so you could have like um i don't know where we're going with this we're going somewhere like if you have a political party that's either left or right if one of those is on fire because they're acting completely disingenuously and just trying to use the system for their own gain and like shitting on everybody yeah, the plane's not going to fly, is it? So, I don't know the point of that. It's a good analogy. It was Somewhere in my head, it was a good analogy. And then uh, then it went too abstract and I confused myself. <laughs> planes, and po which rings on fire? The left or the right one? I t look, look. I don't know. <laughs> the, it's all on fire. The cockpit's on fire. The, p the point is, if you haven't got a wing, the plane doesn't fly. Unless it's a monoplane with, with, or, or a flying wing. It, but in that other case, it's not, a, you know. If you go far enough right, you end up on the left. Unless it's a flat earth. R2-D2's at the back of the plane. Oh, dear single engine jet or like a flying tube like those ufos the cigar ufos
Well, no, technically helicopters have what? Three wings? Okay. And also the, yeah. the body axe is like a bit of a wing as well. Well, well, not for taking off, but like sideways. So, I mean, I mean, how many blades does a helicopter have? Four? So that's four wings, right? Hang on, I've got to get my chicken. I mean, I think you get different. You get three on some. How many blades do helicopters have? I think some have two, some have three, some have four. Three or more? I'm sure I've seen helicopters with just two. Like a gyrocopter only has... Like a Apache only has two, two blades. Or does it not? I've got to find out now. How many blades do helicopters have? Between two and eight. Well, it's got, it's got to be balanced, hasn't it, I guess? Oh, no. Do some have three? I guess it's still balanced. Some do have, yeah. Two, two, two to eight. What's the most blades a helicopter has ever had. <laughs> ah, the, the uh, MI-26 has eight. Yeah. Well, either way, those are technically wings, I think. Ah, uh, yeah, you've got three on the back, haven't you? Oh, no, some don't, some don't have uh, rotors on the back, though. Uh, the, the rear... like stabilizers some of them just use the body of the helicopter to uh, stabilize some have like a jet on the rear blades are not wings no but they're working as wings okay so you're defining a wing as a fixed element that doesn't move hang on is a helicopter blade classed as a wing i think wing is anything that produces lift here we go. In a broad sense, this is chat GTP, so it's all correct. In a broad sense, helicopter blades can be considered analogous to wings in a fixed wing aircraft because they generate lift. However, there are some key differences. Helicopter blades are rotated aerofoils that generate lift through rot rotary motion. Yeah, but I still, it's still a wing. I think the word wing, like a like a bumblebee has to flap its wings doesn't it it can't be stationary it can't glide it can't glide <laughs> uh, you know we're getting into semantics here yeah? dictionary.com either two of the four four limbs of birds Uh, wow, well, that didn't help. A bumblebee's a helicopter. Because <laughs> he lives eye racing slander. <laughs> Can two thirds of a bird fly? Is there any animal that flies without wings? I, I guess those uh, those mammals that jump from tree to tree. But is that flying? They're just gliding? Hang on. Is flying gliding? <laughs> yeah, flying can be described as gliding in the sense that both activities involve moving through the air without the use of propulsion. But then does falling from a plane, is that flying? I mean, you like could maneuver a bit. That's not really flying, is it? <laughs> it's falling with style. Yeah, like where? Do you, hang on. <laughs> I mean, you don't call skydiving sky flying, even with a wingsuit on. Wingsuit? Are they wings? It's a suit. It's a suit. That's a wing. What is going on? <laughs> sky falling. James 007, 007 sky falling, sky falling, <laughs> the Chinese version of skyfall, 
Pound Shop James Bond. New sky falling action figure. If you are swimming, are you technically flying? You know, you're floating. But if you're underwater, are you flying within the water? Like, what's the difference between swimming underwater and flying? In a sense, like, if air was more dense, you could swim in the air. Would you then be flying? If you're going faster, you're making the air more dense, so you're then flying. So by, by that logic, swimming underwater is flying. Un is, is basically flying. So swimming is flying. Not when you're on the surface, though. No, I'm saying if you're underwater... If you're neutrally buoyant underwater and your propulsion is what's elevating you up or down, then that's exactly the same as if you're, like, uh, in the air and your propulsion is... and the angle of your attack from your propulsion is making you go up and down. The air has just become more dense because you're going faster. Well, it's not really become more dense, but relative to the contact with the air particles. So it's exactly the same. What you just don't... Yeah, so it's flight. We should just say... Uh, not swimming though that's different like swimming is like being in a hot air balloon if you're on top of the water if you're if you're in the water because of the, your oxygen in your lungs you're a hot air balloon you're floating so that's fine but if you're underwater you're flying Yeah, submarine is, if it's set up neutrally buoyant underwater, it is technically flying. That's how you navigate them. It's all buoyancy. Well, no, no. If you go down deep enough... You become neutrally buoyant and therefore the, the oxygen that's in your body and the buoyancy of your bones and stuff becomes you're neutral. And if you go if you keep going deeper, you actually can't you, you sink. <laughs> Listen to Game of Muscle trying to get my pilot's license <laughs> drowned. <laughs> well, you know, Well, exactly, that's what I'm saying, Kowalski. Did the Titanic happen? No, when you really think about it, the Titanic's just, uh, it's just, it, it flew to the bottom of the ocean. It's where it wanted to be. I think people are just like, you know, they're overcritical. It's like, yeah, sure, it's not the best place for people to be, but the boat is really happy there. That is, it's just chilling out. It's chilling out on the bottom of the seabed. It's where it wanted to be. You can't argue with physics. Technically, the Titanic is uh, is a submarine. Uh, it wasn't built as a submarine, but it ended up as one. The Titanic actually landed. Yeah, <laughs> the Titanic is one of the most famous boats to ever land. Is it called Land Under the Water? Though, is underwater ground called land? <laughs> <laughs> no, the underwater ground is not called land. Ah, oh, what's earth under the water? Underwater ground is referred to as the seabed. So it bedded. It, <laughs> the Titanic bedded. It didn't land. Where were you when uh, the Titanic bedded? That's a lake. That's a bed. Why do we call it a bed rather than... Why are... Why... Is underwater land called a bed? Comes from the idea of a bed as a foundation or support for something. Just as a bed provides support for a mattress, the seabed provides support for the water above it. Wow. This has been a useful live stream. 
where would we be without this type of content? I just don't know. I'm going to get my chicken on that note. I'll be back in a second. Isn't there uh, that planet uh, or moon that the atmosphere is so dense, uh, but it's like, um, was it methane or something? Basically, um, you can build a space station out of like really solid materials and it would just float. Was it Saturn? Was it Venus? Here we go. Yeah, so Jupiter and Saturn uh, have thick atmospheres composed of hydrogen and helium. Is um is Uranus a planet? I thought they changed it. It was Pluto, wasn't it? I think the problem was, the problem was is that Pluto was classed as a planet, but then they realised that there's shitloads of like large Pluto sized objects. Yeah, look. There are other objects in our solar system are similar size to Pluto. Um, Iris. Humer. 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 Make, make. Yeah, this is a thing. I think that's why they... What's a... 
does a planet have to have a molten core for it to be classed as a planet? Vacation. Dwarf planet, because it has not cleared its neighbouring region of other objects. Oh. It's really creepy to think that it's, it's possible that there are planets floating through space that are like full full size planets that for whatever reason like maybe the star has like flung them out of their orbit or whatever so there's just a planet there, there will be like billions of these just planets floating through space like huge planet sized objects just floating through space until they get captured by the gravity of something how mental is that like I guess you can use models to determine if there's anything somewhat near us but yeah I'm sure there's like science fiction rogue planets could a rogue planet hit earth <laughs> It's theoretically possible. Yeah, no, it is possible. Well, it's the same as a meteor, isn't it? It's just very unlikely. I think... Because you, you can... Scientists have mapped out the orbit of loads of stuff within, I don't know how close, but like a lot of... a, a reasonable distance. And then you could... You'd be able to see if the orbits of stuff has changed or why why an orbit is a certain way. So you'd then be able to go, oh, this, this the object seems to have a somewhat bizarre orbit compared to something else maybe the gravitational pull of something else has affected it at some point as it went past you know so i think you i think you would you presumably you would know i, I guess if it came from entirely like out from really far out It would be more likely that a rogue planet would enter the solar system and then, like, get captured by the sun if it, if it was, like, going to close to the Earth. Then I guess it would then end up getting into the orbit of the sun and then it would affect the orbit of everything, which could really mess everything up. Hang on. Right, chat GTP thinks if a rogue planet was to be captured into the orbit around the sun its effect on earth orbit would be minimal the gravitational influence of a single planet even a large one is relatively small compared to the gravitational influence of the sun so I guess as long as it's not as long as it's not in the same path as the earth you're fine uh, however However, the presence of a new planet in the solar system could potentially have other effects such as pertur perturbations per perturbations <laughs> into the orbits of other planets over long periods of time. 
Additionally, depending on the size of the orbit of the captured rogue planet, there could be indirect effects such as changes in the distribution of asteroids and comets, which could potentially pose a threat to Earth, so we die anyway. You have, you have to start at the back. Well, Rogue Planet. It's a new science fiction film. Yeah. You just die anyway. Right, we're doing this, guys. I've had some chicken. We've learned about helicopters. We've made some shit up. That's all we need. Gary Clark. Can you Google... No. <laughs> Can I Google why... For you, Gary Clark, I'm going to Google... Uh, what is the maximum number of LED RGB lights that could be powered by Earth's current power output? Right. Um, you ready? Uh... Theoretically, for Gary, <laughs> for Gary Clark, the Earth's current power output could power approximately 1.8 trillion LED RGB lights, assuming all the power is dedicated solely to powering these lights. There you go. 1.8 trillion RGB lights. <laughs> Ten to the power of twelve watts. <laughs> Hello, Anderson Shalaby. Uh... Right, let's do this, guys. Let's do this. Thanks, everyone, for taking part as well. Appreciate it. We're on 143 likes. I mean, some of you could click it to get it to 150. I can't believe that those of you that are like always want everything to be perfect are happy with 143. You know, would have thought that that would annoy you. Right, here we go. Uh, Gary, that's not useless information. You now have a target to aim for when you become the next James Bond villain. No, it's, it's when they try and overtake each other. The car on the inside always goes too fast and misses a corner. I think a lot of people that play LMU are also ACC players, so that I think they go between them. Yeah, we've done all the hot laps, we've done all the drift challenges, we've done all the drag challenges. I think we're about halfway through the Steam achievements as well.
This it's a weird dash on this car, isn't it? I, it it looks like um It looks like a cheap kids toy. That's <laughs> I mean. Like a 90s kids toy. The problem is if you if you try and like stay away from the inside you get thrown off the carousel. The carousel's like super risky. Maybe maybe just not using the throttle at all through the carousel. Maybe that's the key. I rather I don't know I... <laughs> I don't know I mean the KTM race I don't know it's all it's all just suffering <laughs> it's suffering all the way down it's fun having something that's difficult to beat I mean, that KTM Drift Challenge wasn't fun because I was getting really motion sick from it. <laughs> so that, that wasn't fun. But, you know, it's the challenge, isn't it? How dare you say I sound brummy? The Kerbin is brutal in this car. Be really careful. Right, we go. Got to run away now. The 
This could be the one. Okay, let's go. Uh, go. I feel sorry for all of you watching this over the last like nine days. <laughs> AC for nine days. Oh dear. How many days of AC do you have to do to delete eye racing from the brain? That's the real question. I don't know how people play ACC so much. Like, I, I really, I can't. I, like, I would rather play eye racing than ACC. Like, because it, even though it's like annoying, there's like re like it, there's a voice chat, and there are different cars. <laughs> like, I, I really don't. I. Like fair play to like uh, Jardier and what have you and OG UK. Like f fair play to them. Like and they, I think they enjoy it, so good for them. But like I, on, I, I don't know. I mean OG UK is insane, so I, I get it. Like he, he's like a Guitar Hero pro, so if you could do Guitar Hero, you could probably put up with anything. But I, I, I don't think I could ever only drive GT3 cars. Like putting aside how ACC feels and stuff I don't think I could only drive basically GT3 on those like same 15 tracks for 4 years straight um, like, I get the competition part keeps it a bit fresh but then GT3 is not like the best for competition and racing either It's like, I was saying that, I play a lot of Counter-Strike and that's just the same maps. And I play a lot of Rocket League and that's the same, but I, I don't know. I think to me, Rocket League and Counter-Strike feel more dynamic and challenging than uh, driving sims. So even like the, um, there's a lot of team interaction. I guess a lot of people doing team racing in ACC. So that, that makes sense. I get that. But like that totally changes with it with any sim if you do like a, a team event it really it really makes it a lot better like even it, even when it's like going shit having like doing stuff as a team is, is more fun i think because you can all laugh at how bad it is Like it does make things a lot easier if you're live streaming because you have, you know, people in chat and stuff. But there's people that don't, they're not live streaming, they're not making YouTube videos, and they spend hours and hours and hours just playing one sim, which is great, for, good for them. Like, if they enjoy themselves, it's fantastic. But like one car in one sim, like Lift for Speed was like that. People would just drive. The, I am the oh, thank you. Eddie Cowers just subscribed with Prime. Thank you very much for supporting us. Really appreciate that. Welcome to the teapot. You are now trapped in the teapot. Terrible human, useless. Are oh, the AIs? <laughs> yeah, Lift for Speed. I mean, to be fair, I used to play the Fox car in Lift for Speed on just, it was just BLGP, A AS Club, BLGP, SO City Chicane, which was amazing. Someone needs to make SO City Chicane route for AC. Tiago Lima needs to port it. SO City Chicane with the Fox car. So good. That's not up there. Bros McGann Trophy in R Factor 1. And SO City Chicane Reverse. Oh, those those were the those were the days. Shit. Edge of the track. Let's keep going. You stream with zero people in chat. Oh that's fine. But at least you're streaming, so like someone could pop in. I'm just Like this. 
I don't know. I think it, like when I'm playing games purely on my own, I tend to do different games than what I'd stream. Because there's some some things just aren't good for streaming. Like Rocket League, I don't think it's very good for streaming. Counter Strike, I don't think it's very good for streaming. Unless you're like a pro. Uh, I think if I wasn't doing sim race, if I hadn't just happened to have grown a sim racing channel, I'd probably be playing. I'd probably stream more like um, Civ and that kind of thing. Because I'd, I'd, you know. I feel like those games are good for streaming. I actually I like flight sims I don't think they're good for streaming but I enjoy them current achievement is to win this Nordschleifer I let time wasted ACC so we're doing the races Oh, is it called GT3 versus the Goliath? <laughs> Yoki Harmer. Progress will be made, hopefully, as long as we don't spin. We've got four second gap. <laughs> Woo! We've been stuck on this one for like two hours, I think. Mostly due to curbing. Oh, and the AI brake checking us. How much would I be paying? I, I I wouldn't do it for money. I, if I don't enjoy it, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I mean, if I kept playing, like, let's say I just ignored the fact that I really don't enjoy playing ACC, and I just played it and I was really positive, um, probably could have made, like, I don't know, 50, 100,000 <laughs> pounds. Just, just by playing a game and being positive. You know. I'd have gone, I'd have hated myself though, so. What's happening here? <laughs> I know, it's too easy. No, I don't. I don't think I can play ACC and be positive. <laughs> Maybe that—that's the skill. That's the genius of like Jardier. He, he, <laughs> he can play ACC and be positive. That's why. Uh, that's why Jardier is like uh, a legend. He's—he's he's he's got the. He's—he's uh, he, he's, he's managed to perform the hardest skill known to man. No, I, I think he genuinely enjoys it. As I say, like, some people do, it's fine. Sam, well, when we do challenges, we go all in. No half measures. This is why I say, like, I don't... This is why I don't load up games like Civ or uh, whatever, because I... If I start something that I feel like I need to do, I get a bit obsessively compulsive with it. At, at all costs. And then <laughs> nothing... 
it, like, nothing will get in the way. If it, if it has to happen, it has to happen. It's terrible. I mean, it's a that's a positive in some ways, but in many ways, it's a, it's awful. Like, it's really not. It's not healthy. It's not good. Active. I've started, so I'll finish. Said the gambler at the casino. <laughs> Thankfully, I managed to get away from poker. <laughs> Poker's the worst. I, I don't know how people do poker and don't go mental. Like, there's been... There, who's that? Um, poker Pro. This ended up, like, 12 million pounds in debt or something now. And they're a really good poker player, but they just... Um, I don't know. Maybe they just had a bit of a mental issue or something. And then the, the difficulty is, is that they were, like, an amazing poker player. What? What? This is it, guys. Get in there. Come on. Down the dot and go home, and then we've got this. What was, what was his name? That the guy, he's got um, black hair. <laughs> he's got black hair. There you go. You know, there's not many poker players with black hair. It was like one of the, sort of in the top five or six players. No, not not Negranu. It's uh Yes Thank Christ for that. Oh my arm. There we go. Bloody hell. Thank you guys. Tom that's it, Tom Dawn. Yeah, I heard that he's Yeah. So I heard that he's like massively in debt and has gone really downhill. But he was like one of the in the sort of top five. But yeah, I don't, like I don't see how you're supposed to stay unless you're a tournament player. I just think it's a toxic environment. Here we go, Mercedes Benz, beautiful. Should we update the counter here? Sixty-five percent. Completed Tetativo. Oh, the emotion. The emotion. One for the history books. 65. That's a nice number. 65, guys. Did you, you could say to your great great grandchildren, I was I was there. Hang on. So what's it what was his name? Um what was his name again guys I want to double check Tom Tom Dawn uh, yeah here we go Yeah, he's basically in debt to loads of people. <laughs> There's loads of online... Because poker online is like... Uh, they message each other publicly. So you see people... Get, oh, at tournaments and stuff, they often do... But like, buy loan people... They loan each other money and stuff and do into, like their own little bets between each other. They're all gamblers. <laughs> They're all degenerate gamblers, basically.
What's that? He won 3.1 million in front of the same person. Oh, yeah, he owed as much as 350k. Hang on, with the Reddit post. Uh, can we finally get the 350k you owe me since 2010? Imagine owing someone 12 years, 3.1 million. Oh, 12 years, scooping 3.1 million pot. That's what you're talking about. Uh, he, owe, he owes me 226,000 for four years. <laughs> Yeah, it's weird. I mean, who knows what's going on behind the scenes? I, I just, I, I wouldn't be surprised if poker, you know, you don't normally, you don't normally get into poker if you're like a normal person, do you? <laughs> it's like, I would have thought, right, if you're like really good at maths and stuff and you're really and you're actually a very controlled person so the money and stuff don't really matter and you're just controlled you would get into card counting blackjack card counting instead and you would just get really good at that uh because that's fixed or like even then there's huge variable but at least it's like in your control until you get backed off so you know maybe at some point john i'll probably go into review mode maybe after we've done this challenge um because uh, reviews take a long time so i might i might just go into start doing a load of reviews for a while but i like i like live streaming at the moment because uh I'm, I'm single at the moment so i'm like uh i don't you know do whatever <laughs> but i do more videos if i'm like doing you know live streaming takes up all your time uh, well, if you do it like I do. Uh, there we go. Well, yeah, I mean, we get the German wife at the end of this year, so, you know. Yeah. Well, if this, if the German wife happens, then the challenge will stop, stop rather abruptly. <laughs> Hello, Channel VR. Well, what do I need to do for this setup? Do you think we can just blitz it with the default? Let's just see. Ah, oh, fog racing. Kunos. The car looks nice. Whoa! Bloody hell. Okay. Right, this might be a tricky one. <laughs> Getting punted by the AI, yeah? Huh? Put the turbo on a bit lower <laughs> until, the, until we get, know what's going on. Ah, oh, I don't. I don't. What's a break? Ah, you push that pedal and the car slows down. Didn't know about that. Oh, Jesus Christ, understeer. Ah, I can't turn! <laughs> the car wouldn't turn! <laughs> I was like, oh, just go to the left. Oh, go, go, oh, go left. Oh, no, we're not going left. Oh. 
the AI works well good through there. Nah, nah, we'll do this. We'll do this one easy. Let me do a poll for it. We'll do, we'll do this in like 15 minutes. Okay, let's go. Eight thirty. There you go. What are they doing? Yeah, I can't cope with this. Ah. Oh my god, what is going on? Car doesn't like corners. Is this an American car? It doesn't like go around corners. Right. Ah! Oh my god! One, four seconds ahead. Oh, I'm gonna have to restart. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Never easy. Maybe I need to change the cell. <laughs> right. Let's add some downforce on this. Oh, we've just got rear wing, that's it. Okay, Bloody hell. Let's go. What was it the camber said we needed more less camber? Or more, I can't remember.
Uh, <laughs> less more gamba. Oh, thank you. Hang on, diff coast. Oh, diff power can be more open, and then that then that will calm the rear down. Right. I remember calling I do someone said in messages that they knew the person that answered the phone <laughs> hello Rose Valley it wasn't emergency services it was just the the support Oh, for God, why are they so slow through there? <laughs> this is not easy. Okay, we have to brake really early. This car is well hard. Yeah, the old second gear start. Let's give that a go. I can't drive! This, this thing has the agility of a cruise ship. This thing's got the this thing turns as well as a bloody tectonic plate. It needs some wings on it. <laughs> <laughs> the 
It must be really heavy. It doesn't slow down either. me Hang on, we didn't change the tyres. We're probably running some like shit tyre. <laughs> Road 1930s. Oh, can't be honest, just crashed. What happened there? You're trying to punt us. Let's go. The AI, the AI can't even handle this car. Oh. 
Oh, I bet there's stuff on the uh, spa. Yeah, we have a handful of this. Too much power. Oh, AI is catching up from behind us. Shit, the bed. Oh, my goodness. Presumably when you design cars, you're like, oh, I think we should make a car that goes round corners. Ah, oh, no. Don't worry about that part. Don't worry about the old corner lark. Just... <laughs> it's good in a straight line, that's all that matters. Final lap, here we go. Ah, oh, no, it's bloody 8.33, so, I mean, I think we still pass this. If I don't crash, I think that's still classed as goal before 8.33. You know. It started before, yeah. That's what I think. <laughs> I think that's fair. Because we, we've had it in the bag since the last three laps. Yes, here we go. Beautiful. Another steam achievement unlocked. Merry Christmas. Simply the best. Better than all the rest. No tyres. Get in there. Steam achievement bonanza. Woo. Clip it and ship it. Right, that's, that's classed as a yes on the pole. Five minutes late, but we're still classed as a yes. Okay, what's this one? Monza 1966 road course. Easy. Oh, dear. Scammed. No, we, we had that. We had that before 8.30. Come on. You know it was.
Uh, five laps of this. Here we go. What is this car? I don't even know what is this. It's got Alfa Romeo something. Alfa Romeo Grand Theft Auto. Alfa Romeo Tutti Frutti. Alfa Romeo needs a higher gear. So for some reason the AI is not very good on the brakes in this. It's called the Alfa Romeo Prima. Rome, Romeo. Yeah, Alfa Romeo. Is this boat is this a boat simulator? <laughs> this car would catch on fire in real life. Ah, <laughs> oh, yeah, there's loads of cars. We've got a list of the amazing cars. This is already leaking oil all over the place. Oh, it's nice to have a relaxing challenge.
a bit of echo as well. Imagine if someone just tuned in then, they'd be like, what the fuck is this? Someone that's never seen a racing sim. They just <laughs> loaded the channel with someone driving this, just going... Eeeh. <laughs> tuning in. Like, what is this? Easy, easy victory, guys. It's a real bus driver's car, this. This is non stop. Oh, we've got another lap. I mean, I guess this is better than the KTM crossbow. It'll turn out that I selected the wrong difficulty mode and we have to do it again. Oh dear, can you imagine? About five, six hours to do the KTM. I like cars where you're permanently driving on the limiter. This car's odometer. Does it refresh every session, or does it does it keep the uh, distance from when you play the game? We've driven 26 miles almost. It's crazy hypnotic. Twenty-nine kilometers that I'll never get back. There we go. Beautiful. 
All right, guys, I'm, I'm wrecked after that. Um, I, think I might call it a night so we can uh, continue tomorrow. It's getting up to 9 p.m. <sighs> it's been a beautiful, beautiful challenge today. I mean, uh, we don't, we've done six more. Update the percentage. Yeah, here we go. 66. What? 66 completed Tetativo. How many uh, challenge sponsors do we have now? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. 19 challenge sponsors. 66% completed Tetativo. Uh, unbelievable. 666 six, 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 six. Um, that is 66 66 18.3% progress through this ah dream should I check my steam achievements as well uh, where, where do you see achievements in steam Where do you, where can you view them? Oh, achievements, here we go. No, how do you see all of them? Here we go. I wonder if this works. Okay, let's go. No, <laughs> doesn't work. Oh, hang on. No. Uh, you've done the KTM drift. Nice. Uh, four hundred and hang on. We can paste this in. Got more percentages. You always you want more percentages. <laughs> we could make it smaller and put it next to this. chart we took that was asking for too much there we go Beautiful. Right. What a what a time to be alive. Who's on now? Who's sad enough to be on? ISL Motorsports, turn seven racing. 
Sim Gamer Nerd is on. Uh, let's have a look. Thanks, guys. Thanks for all the support. Appreciate it. Uh, BAFTA Game Awards. Ah. Uh, love for you. Oh, Smileable's on. Let's send it to Smileable. He's driving in the wet. There we go. Yeah. Send you to Paul Paul Smithington. Okay, take care, guys. Thanks for watching. Have a good uh, Have a good night. Oh, see you tomorrow, hopefully. <laughs> Let's uh, spam tea bags in Paul's chat. Give him a follow if you haven't. Bye.